everything's already recording just so you know okay and this will yeah so if, if you put on the headphones sounds coming through we can fast forward jump around I just figured I, I figured it'd be like easy right to get here. everything just up and recording now so I don't have to think about it in the middle of the transition. And then all the sounds isolated. So actually whenever if I decide to do anything with this audio, um it'll be just the audio of us talking. So if anyone's listening to this, it's Andy and Logan. Yo. And mostly superheroes and we're rewatching Loki for the second time in on the first day. <laughs> just <laughs> How many people do that, I wonder? I mean, I think a lot of people right now. Like what's the record of how, most times someone's watching it in one day? I bet a lot. I bet too many. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you're right. Because I mean, that, that's the bad thing about like releasing MCU stuff like this is like before with the movies, you would just watch. Like you, you you'd have to wait for the movie to come out, and then you'd watch it, and then you'd be like, "Oh man, okay, well, let's theorize and talk about it." But now with it being on Disney Plus, you're like, "Okay, not only can I watch it like on demand, I can watch it as many times as I want." Yeah, it's weird. I can't wait for Black Widow though. Me too. That'd be awesome. I'm so pumped for that because yeah. that's just going to be the movie and then it'll be over. <laughs> yeah. And then we can go home and watch it on Disney Plus for 30 bucks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I won't though. But No, I know. It's that premiere access. Yeah, I don't have that. $30 is crazy. Maybe if we got a few people together, if, if it's that good and I really want to rewatch it within a month or so, but I think it's, they released, it'll be out in October for free on Disney Plus. So Yeah. Yeah. So, oh, is that right? October? Uh, Yeah. That's not bad. Yeah, okay. it's like if you're willing to wait, which a lot of people will be if they're not like diehards. Yeah. I will say this episode was pretty boring. Until like the big stuff, obviously. Like there was really big stuff revealed. Yeah. But the majority of this episode is I saw pretty boring. So I watched like a breakdown. It's like 20 minutes or they just go through the episode with like Easter, Easter eggs and stuff like that. Yeah, like that's that. That's that. And so this. <laughs> I could use that. Someone pointed out that this lady might that might be agatha harkness that's what i was thinking was i was like is that supposed to be agatha and i'm dying because in it can't be in one of my fa- one of my favorite shows ever is i think you should leave and i told you guys to watch this like a long time ago that sketch comedy thing and she's in one of them and yeah that's the uh uh netflix uh tim robinson tim yeah he's like yeah super dry yeah have you, have you watched it yet? i've seen it okay good. i've seen like, a couple episodes of that all right good she's in one of them and i was just like uh, me and Steph looked at each other, and I was like, "It's her." <laughs> well, I I thought that, but then I was also like, "No, I know, I don't know." Well, because she's in the 1800s or 1600s, actually. Yeah, she looks the same. So why would she be like, yeah, younger in the 1980s? It's true. I mean, spoiler alert for Loki episode two if you haven't seen it, because we're just gonna we've already seen this. So like, we get this Loki, and then boom, here it comes, a little magic spell. That's like her. That's like Loki. This is like Loki right now, female Loki. The way I understand it, Did she like t- she touched her, and then that happened. Yeah, and then like you, I thought it was brain like mind control. I was like, she's mind controlling. You've already seen this, right? Yeah, yeah. So yeah, she's like, I was like, okay, so she's mind controlled this time cop. But now that I've seen the whole episode and like to the end, it's actually her. It's like possession, one person at a time. Mm-hmm. And Loki at the end is like, do they survive? Is will he survive? And she's like, yeah, they usually do. Usually, yeah. If I don't delete that out, the whole world will have my own Wi-Fi password, which. I guess they'd still have to drive here. <laughs> I don't know. Can they like hack your stuff if just because I have your password? Yeah, probably. I'll delete it out. <laughs> I don't just just, just to be, be safe. safe. Yeah, yeah. You never know. Lance Armstrong, Loki, and then like a a Hulk Loki. Yeah, he's got like massive body. Look at that. Who's that? <laughs> your shirt's unreal, though. I'm I'm so huh. your shirt. I'm just jealous. Oh yeah. Yeah, Carrie, she like literally just surprised me with it. She's like, all right. Good job, Carrie. Yeah. Nailed it. Well, I guess Mike was wrong about three thirty anyway. He's not here. WTF. All good. I mean, I'm not really in any huge hurry. I'm down to watch this like, full thing again for real. No, I'm not I'm not in a huge hurry, but I was gonna tell you I'm tell Mike too when he gets here, I'm gonna meet up with uh Gaddy after this. Oh, cool. And you're invited. Where are you guys going? I don't know. Somewhere for beers and food. Uh, I invited Luke and Adam too. Um, Carrie's got like a friends dinner tonight, so I just in the last couple hours just yeah. started throwing out some texts. But obviously, I was gonna tell you and Mike about it. Cool. Definitely no rush though. I told him I'd be free. You know, typical time six six thirty. Mm-hmm. But we'll see. Pretty tight, pretty tight agenda. But like we're also talking about two big things, so we'll see. I'm interested to see how long the Superman conversation takes. Hey, what's up? Here's hey. Mike. Mike's here. 
I love we're, we're rewatching Loki a little bit in the first 10 minutes. That's coming through here. How's it going? It's going. Welcome back. Outside. Yeah, it's it's a uh, it wasn't that bad earlier, but I went out there to meet Andy and it was it's better it's to, hotter. Better to just stay inside. Oh yeah. Welcome back. Earlier today, the only thing I went outside for was to, like, move my sprinkler in the backyard. And every time I'd conveniently just get, like, a little bit wet. It was great. <laughs> oh, it feels so good. And Mike, check it out. Oh, nice. Where'd you get that? Carrie. Ordered it, like, after last week's episode. I came here two days ago. Just, like, a little surprise. I was like, oh, my God. Oh. He, he even has his outfit on this episode on there. Yeah, it's perfect. Yeah. Yeah. I'll have to, like, make sure. Oh, the a new Batman thing back there? Back there, yeah, yep. I love that. That's my bro- from my brother, and then that one down there. Oh, that one's sweet. Yeah, yeah. like and they're that tin material. That little there, like a beer sign. Yeah, my mom texted me. She's like, "Do you want this?" And I was like, "Yeah, sure." The <laughs> biggest Batman <laughs> sign I've ever seen in a house. I was telling Andy, um, I'm gonna meet up with our Chris, all of our chiropractor, <laughs> 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 our friend. Uh, maybe our buddy Luke, maybe Adam, but for sure Chris after this for like beers and, right. and food. So if you can make it happen, you guys are both Damn. invited. I'm going to Lake this weekend, so I got to get shit ready. I hear you. I leave for Big Sky, Montana on Monday. There you go. We're off next week, all three of us. Are you driving? Yep. Brian said you might go by Denver. Yeah, we are. Nice. Yeah, we're going to stop in Denver on Tuesday. Tuesday night, staying with Megan. and then Their house is nice. That's where we're staying. Yeah, it's nice. Can't wait. Stay in like five different towns across the way. Three, three nights in Montana, though. Just have a bunch of beverages. Yeah, it will be. Get in, go to a restaurant, pop around, get some beers, and then go back and chill, go to bed. I don't know if you'll chill some nights. We'll see. I mean, yeah. I mean, we're driving a lot, though. Yeah. Like, it's a lot of hours on the road, which is what I'm – actually, it's part of why we decided to do it. I'm really excited. Do the old-fashioned road trip type thing. You watched this? Yeah. I watched think? it this morning. It was good. I liked the first one a little better. Yeah, I said um, the same thing. But I think it was still good. I don't know who the person is. Does anybody know who that lady is? Like at the end? Yeah. I mean, it's other Loki. Is it just another Loki? As far as I can tell. I don't know, Andy. Did you read something <laughs> about this chick yet? Not really. She has the horn things. Yeah, She's. Lady. I mean, yeah. That's. I mean, that was like the giveaway for me was that like if there was any question of what – who she is, those horns are like, okay, yeah, that's that's Loki, because yeah. that's like that's a Loki thing. So I listened to another podcast. I talked about this on my fresh reaction today, but Marvel Cinematic Universe podcast, and they were talking about how when they leave those bombs behind, I mean, they're bombs. Like, it's disintegrating yeah. everything. Like, I, I thought maybe it was some kind of time magic, and it was just resetting, but... Who was Jessica Jones' villain guy? Kill... Killjoy? Killroy? Kill, Killjoy? Yeah. Kind of remind she kind of reminded me of him. Can't, didn't Killjoy go into people's minds and stuff and like could control people? He could tell them to do what something. To do yeah, yeah. Kind of. If know. he tells, it's like if he tells them to do something, they have they do to it. do it. Yeah. Well, this one looks like it just kind of goes in and out of the, like. Didn't yeah. have a home. It looks like it's her though. Like yeah. it's like, but then she has her own body too. Yeah. So it's almost like both. It's almost like she can like be herself, but then she can like be like possessing someone yeah. at, at any time. This lady, I feel like she's up to She's something. a big actor, I think. Actress. Yeah, she is for sure bad. I think she's bad, too. Or, or at least part of it to where, like, she has doesn't have, like, much of a choice. Yeah. She like that one guy in uh, WandaVision, like the leader of the... Of the Neighborhood Watch? No. Oh. <laughs> it was, like, the guy that was outside of, like, WandaVision, like, watching the town, like, kind of like a government agency... It not could, really bad, but not really good. Could be something like that. Yeah. But I think she's like, like he talks to her twice in this episode, and the second time she's like, he's like, I really gotta take Loki to these apocalypse, this apocalypse, and she's like, I don't know, I think that you know, and he's like, come on, yeah, he had to like beg her, to, yeah. to, and so I feel, I feel like she's like, you're getting getting too close to something, or she's like, I know what's gonna happen, and you just messed it up again. Yeah. Right. <laughs> And he seems like he's like on a on a little chaotic adventure too. He's like, "Wouldn't you ever see me this excited?" I'm like, "So you're already like deviating from your normal state, you know?" Yeah. 
Is there a way to turn it up a little bit? Yeah. Mm. It's important to him. Because there's one one of them that broke off. I don't know. I'm just saying that like of all the things it. happening, like this is a big deal. Like someone's attacking the time variance authority. Like they're being attacked and killed. And he sent that one thing off Insta. It was Loki's little horns on one of them. Yeah. But then she had horns. I wonder if one of the timekeepers went rogue and said, screw it. Because she's like, I don't want to go with the timekeepers. I want to do my own thing. Maybe she already is a timekeeper. She could be. And she's, yeah, because she's like, oh, man. She like, she's like, you're going after the time variance authority, and I'm I'm not about that. I'm doing something else. She's like, this ending's crazy. Yeah. I mean, he just goes. He goes, and they show the, I mean, I don't know if you could tell. I saw a tweet. That's why I asked if you guys had seen it yet. Um, I was wondering if you guys had seen, like, they listed out the places that were, that she bombed. Like they're on a screen. Oh, I didn't see that. And it's like it's like twenty different places that they like name and the year of each place. Oh yeah, one was like Sakar, not um, fuck. Oh, it was yeah, Sakar like nineteen eighty four. Yeah. Uh, I couldn't think of the name. New Sakaar, York yeah. City two thousand three. Uh, Asgard two thousand fifty. Oh yeah. well, maybe that wouldn't make sense because it was destroyed already. But like all over. Um. Vormir, where the Soul Stone lived, yeah, like 2008. Like there were just everywhere. No one was safe, and she dropped those time bombs into all those places in, in random years. That's really funny. I didn't catch that that's the such, first time. That's such a low key observation. Like you little ice baby, I just felt bad for you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, a lot of downtime in this one. Like just them, yeah. like going around the bureau. I mean, he literally does paperwork like two or three times. So he looks like Kane the Conqueror. That's what we're saying. Guy in the middle, he's got like the kind of like the yeah, apocalypse think, looking I, head. I, I think he's got to be related to this somehow. I just don't know how. I think I feel like it would only make sense if the timekeepers are actually bad and not good. Yeah. Or are they even like real? That too. Like, are there even timekeepers? Mm-hmm. You know, like you guys were saying last week. Because I do get this sense of, like, the, both of these guys are just chasing their own tails. Yeah. Man, I really thought this, I thought we were going to go back into Ragnarok during this. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I was like, yeah, do it. I didn't like the Pompeii scene. That was kind of tacky. <laughs> it, yes, it was. And it was <laughs> one of those things where I was like, again, a lot of these shows are doing this. Now, like these mo- these modern shows, where like I'm like, there's always like thirty percent of it that I'm like I didn't I didn't need that. Yeah, like the, they died. Like those people really did die. Yeah. There. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. And he's just giving a speech. I yeah. kind of laughed, but like I was like I get it. Ever seen that one Pompeii guy that's jerking off? Yeah. In a volcanic ash. No. He's trying to go out on top. Yeah. He's like, if this thing's gonna explode, so am I. He did. He did. <laughs> Him jerking off. He tried to put it out. Volcanic ash. I hope he (laughs) tried to put it out. I hope he got to finish. I hope he was. Looks. He looks pretty into it. He's like, not. I'm almost. Just give me one more. (laughs) They closing your schnooks right there. Yeah. I read that on the post. Yeah, they are. It's a real. It's a real hit. (laughs) Show Deerberg's. That's our grocery store. I mean, mainly. I mean, we. Man, that sucks. We like Aldi too, but Deerberg's is expensive too. Yeah, Deerberg's pricey, but. I, I don't know, like Shrewsbury, is that like everybody's like shopping at, I mean, obviously they weren't shopping at Schnucks, otherwise it wouldn't have closed, I feel like. It was packed when I went through just now. Their food was going. Really? Ooh. Oh, yeah. You'd have like bread that would go like bad after two days of buying it. It was nasty. Where are you going to go now? I don't know. We use Instacart still for like, and we still like use Aldi, so I'll actually it won't even be that much of a change, but. I mean, whenever it was like run to the grocery store, if I was going to get out and go to the grocery store, that was always the place. I don't know. Depends on what it is. Full run, yeah. I might still just find another Schnucks. I really don't like going to Aldi. High points so opening and- a location in Kirkwood. The burger place? Mm-hmm. That's cool. Probably go a couple times. Max is just bad, too much better. I know. It's a tough town to be a burger joint where Max lives. Yeah. Don't get me wrong, I like High Point, but mostly for their crazy specials. 
not so much Who? just their standard high point. Like just their oh, yeah. their wild, crazy stoner specials that they have. They're just crazy conglomerations of kind of like Sugar Fire does that are yeah. just insane. Yeah, just ridiculous. But I never get them because I'm like, I don't want to die. Like, yeah, I'll die I'm not if looking to like have a coronary. Like, yeah. I don't. Some of those are like they just gross me out. Like, there's just mac and cheese pouring off the side of like a barbecue sandwich. I'm like, yeah, I don't even want that. You know, like they really dive into it. And like. Not only are you going to get this explanation, but we're going to go to Pompeii and really drag this thing out. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I said. Like 10% of this episode is like, oh, shit. But like the rest, of it, there's a lot. It's definitely slower. The Mandalorian filler episode. But even those, though, like I don't mind like mission episodes. This was like. This is a mission. I thought Mandalorian did a lot of mission episodes. Like, well, no, they do. That's But like it's a mission episode type of show. This one sure. is like. At least this know. gave you some stuff. Mandalorian's yeah. like, oh, you got to go here and like find your ship. <laughs> yeah. Before you. And then you got to trade with these things. And like, you're not going to want to kill, but because you're a Mandalorian, you will. What time are we starting this thing? We can do it. Sit here. Let's just fast forward this to the end. Yeah, go to the end. I'm glad that lady wasn't really bad. No, I don't think. No, she's just. No, I'm glad she wasn't. Yeah. See, like, so right now she's like in him, but she also has like her own body. This is the year 2050. Too. Right. I, th I thought we were going to see something crazy in here. We didn't, though, except for what she does. As in, like, I guess outside of this part of the MCU, just like a crazy person yeah. you can see that. I don't know. I know what you mean. Just thinking about shit going down in 30 years from now. Yeah. This guy's face. I thought that was Ross from WandaVision kind of for a second. Look, there's all the listings this is when they list them. Asgard, 2004. 1390. Rome, Italy. Sakar, 1984. Like, nowhere safe. Titan. Titan was on there. Yeah, I saw that. Here they all go. They're all running everywhere. There he goes. There wasn't any ending scenes or anything, was there? Not that I saw. I don't think so. No, I let it run to the end. Okay. You got. You never know. Just sneak them in. All right, hit the head. And we'll start. Everything's already recording. I'm good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You're not. <laughs> oh, I thought you said you guys hit the head, and I was like, I'm okay. You don't <laughs> you know my body. Me. Just pee your pants. Dedication. By, the, <clears throat> by season three, four, three or four, we might have catheters hooked up during episodes so we don't even have to take breaks. So, like, is this... Did we just watch, like, the birth of the multiverse, like, right there? Um... Possibly. Right. Like, is this, is this like her big plan to like just have, I and mean, when you have a hundred Nexus points and they all branch off at the same time, like, there's no way the TBA will be able to manage it. Or is it they're just going to be another show where they go and restore the timeline? 
Right. Kind of like the Captain America finding the Infinity Stone type thing. Yeah, and are they just going to reset all the... Th- that, that's what I'm saying about like these past these six episodes. I'm like, I hope this isn't just like... Th- those are the most frustrating type of shows and movies where they're like, everything just got rewritten. That's a good point. I gotta keep your PC out. Yeah, half half the shit I would need to look up is blocked on there, anyways. <laughs> because of well, because of where you yeah, work. Yeah, yeah. Well, Patreon folks, I don't know if we'll have a show for you or not. We just kind of sat here and watched Loki, so <laughs> I don't know if that'll end up being anything. Maybe it'll just be for me to listen to in my private time later. Just Andy's soft breathing, <laughs> <laughs> or all my sniffles from last last Monday. Hopefully the cat won't show up again. I'm I'm all meted up today. I'm good. Sudafed, uh, Nurtec, and Percocet, and Molly <laughs> sprays. <laughs> yeah, I guess the whole thing. I wish. Can't even feel my legs. <laughs> <laughs> my face is numb. I'm floating. I wouldn't blame you. All right, I'll kick us off. Let's do it. Let's do it again. It's Wednesday, June 16th, 2021. This week, we highlight the Mostly Superhero Squad on Facebook. We watch the second episode of Disney Plus MCU series, Loki. And for the meet, we review, rate the 1978 Superman the movie. You got the giggler, PC Mike. I'm Logan. This is Mostly Superheroes. Hello and welcome to Mostly Superheroes, a weekly pursuit for the world's best stories with an emphasis on live action superhero stuff. Back in the studio for more, I'm your host Logan, we got PC Mike, the Giggler. Fellas, how are we doing? Good to see you, got some fun stuff today. PC Mike, let's start with you this week. How, you, how was your week? How does it feel to be back? It was great to be back. Um, week is good. Put it on the radar now. I know when this comes out, it'll be a little late, but one of the best comedies in the past 10 years premieres season two tonight, (laughs) Dave Dave. on FX. Thank you for the reminder. Episodes one and two drop tonight, so when you listen to this, episodes one and two will be out. I really appreciate that because I didn't put it in the show. I didn't realize that it was so soon. And what you're so right, like what a spectacular new type of comedy on FX. I started rewatching it last night with the wife and she even loves it like crying laughing oh yeah so good and i was like will you tell your friends to watch and she's like depends on which friends yeah like some won't be able to take it (laughs) there's some i mean there's (laughs) There's some some there's some harsh raunchy stuff in there but that's why we come back for it carrie loves it too uh thanks for the reminder dave we'll be talking about season two for sure giggler welcome back thanks for having me again i mean at this point I mean, you're just you're just here. I know. You guys just show up every every week. You now it's multiple times per week. This chair is just officially molded to my ass, so it's like <laughs> no one else can sit here. That's the giggler chair. That's <laughs> right. No, welcome back. Good to be back. Uh, yeah, we're here in the studio here in St. Louis, Missouri. This is mostly superheroes. Um, you know, we always start with fan mail, but first off, had to show off some show and tell this week. We got some upgrades. If you're watching us on Facebook and YouTube, you can see them. Thanks to my brother Case. He just uh, donated some stuff to me for the studio. We got the big Batman symbol behind me. I mean, it's the Keaton. That's mm-hmm. the best one. Next That's to the best one. next to PC Mike's cardboard Keaton mm-hmm. that you donated that you said we would keep here as long as we do the pod. We're still, still doing, doing it. it. It's coming up, coming up about on a year. year, about a year. Wow. Uh, and then there's one behind you, Giggler. Again, the same <sighs> kind of. Yeah, like it. that's like almost like what Batman is that? 
Like that's the that's like the Keaton logo, but on like almost a, a animated Batman. animated Batman. Yeah, the animated Batman was more blue, so I think that's got to be it. That's like the Six Flags Batman. Mm-hmm. Best ride at Six Flags St. Louis. Oh, absolutely! It's the one that you go to first. Uh, Most if, consistent. If Always. you don't go to Hurricane Harbor, true, right, right away because yes. that entrance is first. <laughs> All right, let's get, let's get into the fans. If you go to the left, guys, you're a coward. Yeah, when it, well, yeah. <laughs> if you go <laughs> left, we can all agree on that. If you go left at Six Flags St. Louis first, you're either going for the ice cream, the uh, the what used to be the old time drivey cars. You might have not, kids. Not, you Mr. Might Freeze. Have kids. Yeah, it's the kid zone. You might have kids. Isn't that the Looney Tunes zone? Yeah, or Mr. Freeze is right over there. there too. So, yeah. Man, we really got the Six Flags mapped yeah, out. Why, comes, why, uh, why don't we just on. go? Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> I would love. To. They serve booze there. I did not realize that. I haven't been to Six Flags since. They got uh, beer at Six Flags? Like, yeah. So you can get like a, you just get a Bud Light, get in line for the Batman. You're talking about a good day. You get drunk at Hurricane <laughs> Harbor. I'm in. <laughs> I'm in, I'm in. There's so many parents that are doing exactly that. That Always Sunny episode when they'd go to the water park. I feel like that would be <laughs> like us. <laughs> no. All right, let's kick it off with some fans. Fan mail. Doesn't Frank cut the line by telling people that he has AIDS in that episode? Yeah, and then okay. he goes. <laughs> I'm making sure I'm thinking of the right one. He goes on the wrong slide. It's yeah. not open yet. And it doesn't throw, have water. They throw a cup of water down. And he's like, I think it's good to go. And he goes down. His back just bleeds the <laughs> his, whole way. His bloody ah. back. And they're like, there's AIDS blood in the pool. That's one of my favorite <laughs> scenes ever. So I was like, you said that episode. And it clicked in the back of my head. And I was like, oh. Yeah. They're still going too, right? They came yeah, back with, with season Six, 13, and now they're well, just. Well, no, 16's coming, getting ready to come. So out. it's been a few years since they came back, is what I'm saying. Yeah. And it's still just going. Yeah. It's awesome. Mac and D get stuck in the actual slide for like <laughs> yeah. the whole episode. Just, just screaming. <laughs> oh, yeah. We, uh, we were talking about, we went to a city park yesterday in St. Louis, Francis Park, and we saw like the, the thing that Frank gets stuck in. Like the, oh, the, the, when the, he's on the playground the spiral with, the, thing? With, with the rings. Oh, yeah, and he's yeah. like, I can't get out. He's there all day. How'd you get in there? <laughs> Um, for fan mail, folks, give us a call. We actually featured our first fan feature voicemail last week. It was our boy Scotty, and uh, you can call in and get your voice featured at seven five four call log seven five four two two five 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 six four. It's super easy, super fun. But our fan mail today actually comes from Facebook, our mostly superhero squad. A new member, we got our welcome to the crew, Rebecca S. Welcome to it. She threw out a great question, and a few of us had some comments here. We're talking about uh, really the Infinity Saga into WandaVision, MCU Town. She asks, how was the government able to take Vision's body if vibranium is so rare and sacred to Wakandans? I love this question. I'm kind of looking at you, Giggler, on this one because it's more MCU Town. Um, but, you know, it's a good question. Spoiler alert for WandaVision, but, you know, the, the government ends up with Wand with Vision's body. And it is mostly made of vibranium. They were in Wakanda at the time of Infinity War. I thought this was spot on. I was like, how did S.W.O.R.D. get their hands on it? So we, we threw out some options here. Uh, I commented back, said, great question. You know, I, I thought maybe War Machine was involved. He was working with the government at the time. Um, or maybe the Avengers even took him just to see what they could do and try to help him out. Because at the end of Infinity War, the main Avengers were still alive there. Like Steve Rogers, Natasha. You would think they'd speak up and be like, Vision comes with us. Because yeah. he's an Avenger. Um, Scott, our boy Scotty, he wrote in and said, I'm sure it has something to do with the Sokovia Accords and the fact that Vision was an American, uh, the Avengers were left, likely brought him home. So that could have been it. And then Andy <laughs> commented, governments just be doing what they want, just like real life. It's so true. <laughs> Honestly, that's, I mean, I was joking, but that's also what I really think that might have happened. I don't know. Yeah, like the government just stepped in and seized him at a certain point, yeah. even if it was from the Avengers. I mean, it's still like five years from... Infinity War to Endgame, so a lot happened by the time Wanda. I mean, WandaVision's post blip, so yeah. many years had gone by. I don't know if you guys have any other thoughts and or theories on this one. I think we kind of flushed it out, but wanted to feature it. See if you had anything else. You never know what you're going to see in a future. It could be in Wakanda Forever movie. It could be in the Wakanda show. Just never know. Yeah, we might get that story eventually. And you know, I already said spoiler alert for WandaVision. I'm glad we brought this back to the forefront because I am predicting that we will see this white vision come back in a big way and have an impact on Wanda's future actions. I mean, you don't build up for what is it? Was it six or eight episodes? Eight, right? Yeah. Nine. Nine? WandaVision was nine episodes. I don't think you build for nine <laughs> episodes and just oh, white vision just out there just living life. Yeah, he's like, you know, it's everything's all white. All right, let's move all, on. After all that. right or all white? <laughs> yeah, it was all white. You all heard right. it. You heard that. All white. 
Uh, Rebecca, thanks for the comment. We love getting stuff like this featured on the show. Great question. Gets the brain working, and uh, you too can be featured. Just go join that Mostly Superhero Heroes squad on Facebook. It's free. It's exclusive. And once you're in, it's private, so you can kind of let your opinions fly. <laughs> Political opinions, if needed. <laughs> yeah. I do monitor the the uh, the posts, so we'll see. Uh, no, no, I'm just kidding. We'll, I'm not running a dictatorship here. We can run it. All right, let's talk about some news. News and rumors. This is actually a fan featured news. Scott's basically like an honorary host at this. He's like a, <laughs> he's he's being featured in almost every section. <laughs> you can be just like Scott. All you got to do is send us stuff, and uh, we have actually been getting a lot more fan mail lately. But here from the news, I don't know if you guys saw this. I watched the trailer today. I was curious about it. This is from E3, a big gaming convention that's going on. I guess it was last week, and they there was a world premiere trailer for Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy, the video game. Um, I'll just say it. I thought the trailer looked cool. I don't know if you guys have heard this, but you actually are only Star-Lord in the game. You don't play any of the other Guardians of the Galaxy, Gamora, Drax, Groot. You are Star-Lord. Did you guys see this trailer? I did see the trailer. Parts of it, yes. Parts of it? I just kind of like skimmed through it. Like, I knew I wasn't going to... You weren't that... Uh, and you guys are... You guys actually own consoles. I, I don't. It was mostly out of just... Like, I'm in, I'm not going to have a count console soon enough once roommates take them. So Oh, that's I'm part like, of the honestly, roommate part move? Of, part of me not watching it was like, I don't want to get like tempted into buying a console just for a game like this. You're going to buy a console, though, aren't you? One. I don't know. I, just, I bought two games this year, and I... I played them for a combined hour. And I'm like, I just don't think I have the time or where I want to play video games anymore. I'm like, is this is this gr- growing up? This is crazy. What? You're, this I is... mean, video game listeners are like, oh, so you can quit. You can't. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, I don't know. It just kind of organically happened over the past few years. Like, I just don't really have the urge to. I mean, there's there's a game that'll that'll get me back into it. It's when just, the new Arkham. Yeah, something like, like that. That That is a no-brainer. I will buy a console for an Arkham. That yeah, because you guys love the Arkham games for well, what's sure. What's that new one that we talked about? Like Arkham Sirens? Arkham oh, Knights. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Knights, yeah. Arkham Knights. Yeah, Arkham so, Knights. And then, I mean, we've talked about games that almost got me to buy a console. I still haven't, but the, both Spider-Man games. Yes. The, the Marvel Avengers, Avengers game, Avengers which is like game got, Gotham Knights. pretty bad reviews. Gotham Knights, you're right. That's, Arkham Knight. It's that was my concern with this. Like they did, they supposedly dropped the ball in the Avengers game. I haven't played it yet, but that's what I've heard too. From, I heard I heard the Jock and Nerd fellows talking about that last week. That that's kind of flopped. Yeah, people that I know that have even played it are like, it's not that great. So, well, what did you guys? What did you think of this PC, Mike? Did this? I mean, you've seen the movies. We just talked about them uh, just recently. So it, you had a fresh take on the film, but this is totally different. It just doesn't move the needle for me. Yeah. I hate to say it. Yeah. I was just like, okay, this is it a money grab? I yeah. Mean, a lot of it's very hard. A lot of these movies they turn to video games, and video games that turn to movies they just don't work. Yeah, most of the time. Um, I don't know if it gets great reviews and people are ranting and raving about it. I'll probably buy it. Yeah, I don't have to leave my couch to buy it. But video games are tough, right? Because mm-hmm. you got to like it's not the trailers could be totally misleading, and then the game oh, could for just, sure. just gameplay suck. and what they show yeah. versus what. Yeah, you and how do you, do. How, do you, how do you not capitalize? It's the Guardians of the Galaxy. It's a multi-character game. You can't even, and you can only be Star Lord. Oh man, if they somehow, if they just made a game and were like, "Yeah, this is MCU canon," we'd be like, "All right, we're in." Just do the (laughs) MCU MCU canon. You're in the MCU. You're living out your own multiverse. Or no, I mean, I'm just saying, like, just just say this game. They have a game about Loki, and just say that um, the story that's in this game is included in Marvel, the MCU canon, and just say that. It's part of the universe. But how's that work? It's not a story. It's a. They it's can a, make. They can make a story. I guess you're right. That's it, part of the. That's my favorite part of like those Batman games. I think is the story overall. Right, and also it, that's my favorite DC game. Actually, are the, uh, um, the the Justice League games where there's alternate heroes they're fighting. What are those called? Starts with an I. Injustice. 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 Yeah, I, yeah, I played the that. story having a film. You're so right. It's like a. It's a full blown story, and yeah. you're playing along. So yeah. it could be Injustice having a film. No, 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 not that I know. Of. No, we, no. We're just talking hypothetically. But we're like, talking if, about how the stories really can be our our video games. Yeah. Video games are all about the story. Yeah, I'm obviously if this if they said this the story of this game connects to the MCU, I'd be like, all right, I'm playing it for sure. Yeah. So that kind of maybe missed an opportunity there of not doing that, but who knows? Well, yeah. you can hear us, folks. We're lukewarm on the game Guardians of the Galaxy by Marvel. Um, check. Let us know if you're if you're going to be playing this. If you're a gamer out there, uh, we do like to stay at least up to speed 
on the superhero stuff. PC Mike, you got something? There is a DC announces Injustice Gods Among Us animated movie coming out. A move animated movie. Okay. Uh, okay. I have been wanting to watch some of the more of those animated movies on the DC Hub on HBO Max. I I just yeah. keep coming through and I see like the different Justice League Dark and there's, I know there's a couple Batman films. There's some gems in there. Yeah. The Batman ones especially. Yeah. Okay. There are. Like, you guys watch those? I've watched like the long Halloween, I think, Batman Year One. Mask of the Phantasm. Yeah. Wow. We've all, that. We've all watched title. that one. I, I have that VHS. I when we were kids, that was like a... Mm-hmm. Oh, really? Uh, That's an older one? Like a uh, VHS like yeah. release. The scary cover. What's yeah. it called again? Like the Fanta- Mask I, of the Phantasm. I'm going to show it to you, and you're going to recognize it for sure. I all bet, right, I bet you right. are. All right. Yeah, yeah. Pull it up. We'll, we'll pull it back up. All right. So Gardens Galaxy, we keep you posted. And the other... Uh, and Scott, thanks for sharing that with us. Oh, there's the image. Yeah, I remember this. Yeah. I remember this I poster. I you would. I think everybody's had the movie. I can't really remember what happened. But. Yeah, you just send me that. Send me that, and I'll put it. <laughs> I'll put it in in post. Um, and the last piece of news. This is in the sports town. I didn't watch this, but I w- really want to know if you guys had watched it. Your thoughts on it? The only reason it's made it onto this show is because I feel like with Logan Paul being like a YouTuber, <laughs> the headline here. This is from the Guardian. Logan Paul fought Floyd Mayweather and went what eight rounds? Yeah. I watched it. I just want to know if you guys Twitter. were if you were aware of this. Do you yeah. have any thoughts on it? I am like in my mind, I just wanted to bring it up because I'm really like, why did this happen? And I think Floyd Mayweather. I listened to Joe Rogan. He got paid a hundred million dollars to do mm-hmm. this fight. It didn't count against his record if he lost. Yeah, it was a non-sanctioned fight, basically. Yeah, it was eight rounds. Yeah. Pretty, and, pretty easy call for Floyd Mayweather like, and Logan. Yeah, Paul. yeah, that's what. I'm, but that's that's where it gets into like, holy cow! Like this just happened for the pure money. Yeah. That was it. Yeah, I don't. I mean, and do you think that he like? Did you guys watch the fight? So I, not, I watched it on Twitter because I was going to bed when it was happening, and like there was it, it, you're supposed to pay for it, but like it was one of those sites that were like this is this is going to get taken down, and I just was like watching the tweet, like not even clicking on it or anything, and the video like there. It just looked like they were dancing around the ring. Like Logan Paul was like punching him sometimes, but he was just blocking the everything. Like yeah. I bet it didn't even hurt him like a fly. Well, Floyd I, hit him once pretty good. Yeah. It looks like he got knocked out and Floyd kinda held him up and But I was just like brought him back. I was but, expecting it to I don't know anything about boxing. I was like, he's gonna get his ass kicked and he's gonna be but, KO'd but he didn't. in the first round. But he didn't and it almost I, I, and this, is, this is bad because I haven't even seen it. But I'm like I'm based on what I've read, what Joe Rogan was saying, it's like it almost looked like he was just kinda hanging out in the ring. Yep. He didn't go in there to hurt Logan Paul at all. He's like, you know, I'm just going to. It's a money grab. That's now why I, I can watch. fight again. I wanted to see Logan Paul just get smashed. Exactly. And that's even what this article, I have a, uh, uh, this link to this in our episode description. Like, it alludes to this. Of like, you know, there might be a, another fight one day. And I'm like, so then everybody has to, because like, did, did people have to pay you to watch this fight? Yeah, pay-per-view, yeah. I'm just saying. Like, uh, it feels a little schemey. I would have been so mad if I would have spent a dime to watch exactly, it. Exactly, because your hope is Logan Paul gets the shit mm-hmm. kicked out of him. You're like, okay, this guy said that he could do this. This is the best, in Joe Rogan's opinion, best boxer in the world. I don't know much about the sport. He's I've seen Rocky. Rocky's good. He's 50, <laughs> I mean, he's 50-0. He's 50-0. You think, like, this guy is not a trained fighter. Like, Logan Paul, I'll give, it, I'll give him this. He looks like he's in great shape. Yeah. I did Both not. Both the Paul brothers do this, and they're money grabs, but. That's their whole thing, though. He's an internet personality. Yeah. And it's kind of sad. Like, there's a huge fight coming up with Tyson Fury versus Wilder 2 or 3, and no one's really talking about it. And yeah. They're kind of stealing yeah. from that. Boxing, that's Floyd Mayweather will talk about it, and I don't, I'm not educated enough on the topic, but boxing's the titles and things are just in such weird shape and you have to pay for your title and do different stuff. And there's so many different titles. There's WBC. There's all this kind of stuff. Boxing just needs to have like an overhaul and just like one type. Yeah. One belt for each weight class and not pay for the different things. And cause Tyson Fury and them will be fighting for like three or four belts or something like that. One of the boxing is one of those things that I want to love. Like, it's like, I'm not even a huge sports guy. And boxing, though, you're like, I want to love it. I'm like, this is, this is one of the most, it seems like it has a lot of tradition. One-on-one, you know, it, it's like, who's it's very straightforward about, like, who's going to win this thing, put him against it. But this seemed like, if anything, it, it wasn't good for the boxing. This this made me not like boxing more than had it not happened. And then his brother's getting ready to fight Tyron Woodley, the former UFC champion. 
See, now what I am pro is like if you can really just make it about the fight and be like, listen, you have, that's why I love UFC. Us two yeah. in the ring. Yeah. Don't hey, no holding back. No just getting by. Like it needs to be like a fight, not to the death, but like until someone calls it. Mm -hmm. I agree. Either a TKO or a KO. Like well, not and his, and his brother Jake's fighting all these UFC guys that are wrestlers. Mm -hmm. They just beat Ben Askren, who mm -hmm. went to Mizzou, who's a UFC champion, yeah. but also a wrestler. He's yeah. fighting Tyron Woodley, who also went to Mizzou, who is a UFC fighter. At least he fought a boxer. Yeah, I mean it was it was not good, but at least he fought a boxer. Yeah, but and Logan Paul is like I guess he wrestled. He was like a wrestler. You gonna have like a um, a future Logan Internet personality boxing match? You you got any <laughs> uh anyone you want to call out? Well, I'll tell you this. I mean, for the payday. Yeah, I'd take punches and especially from Logan Paul for it, the payday. You just take and if you're only taking a few, you know that's I get it, but. Oh, yeah, I, you, hey, you, 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 you tell me who I'm gonna be fighting, Giggler. I'll tell I'm, you. I'm trying to think of somebody old and washed up that, that, <laughs> yeah. you, could, that you that you could pay me take. Get Lou Frigno or something. <laughs> <laughs> no, whip the hell you a could bad probably idea. pay him I'm sixty not bucks to I'm, show up. I'm not challenging anybody. I I just wanted to see. I brought it up simply out of the curiosity factor on this end, and it sounds like we are. Mike, you knew way more about wrestling, UFC, and boxing than I thought you would. I didn't know if I should have known you would though. I'm in deep. I'm yeah. in too deep. <laughs> All right. Um, I love Tyson Fury. If you don't watch, Tyson Fury's awesome. There's I, a clip out there. You can see me. I know nothing. Tyson Fury, there's a clip out there of him dodging punches, and it's one of the coolest things I've ever seen. Like he's just like the Matrix, like just yes. moving so it, fast. They, he literally said, This is the Matrix. That's the just, guy whoosh. that was in WWE for a bit, yes. Tyson Fury? Yeah. yeah maybe. He might have done he might have done something. He he's a like big Braun English guy. Strowman. He might have. Yeah, he's a big English guy. His story's awesome too. Like All a redemption right. story. Uh, listener, if you got any uh, viewer, if you have any opinions on this Logan Paul fight, if you know more than we do, obviously we didn't know hardly anything, but uh, <laughs> let us know. Write us in at mostlysuperheroes.com. You can get featured during the news. And uh, with that, let's go ahead and get into what we're watching. What you watching? Uh, real quick, we are featuring episode two of Loki today. I'm so excited to talk about it. Before, before we do this, uh, I just wanted to go ahead and give an update. We featured a fan voicemail last week from Scott telling us to watch Sweet Tooth on Netflix. I already watched the whole thing. Did you really? Yes. Mm -hmm. You watched the whole thing too? Mm -hmm. Jesus. Not, not mad about it at all. I'm going to give a referral from uh, Carrie, uh, my lady, and she says it's a must watch. Okay. Agreed. I will watch it this week before we <laughs> tape again, and we can discuss next week. All right, I'm just now. I'll make it a thing. I'm just now realizing I said uh, Carrie's first and last name on the <laughs> podcast, so I'll probably I'll probably bleep it out. Yeah, <laughs> she's like, what the? <laughs> we got PC Mike the Giggler, but I'm like my fiance. Uh, her social security. <laughs> no, hey, I wanted to give that perspective because yeah. this was a wild show. It is like it's from you know, uh, Scott's read the source material. That he said one of his favorite comics of all time. You got Carrie. You know, someone that's like watching this thing fresh as like a TV show. Loved it. I loved it. Must watch. I will say big cliffhanger to where they're like definitely trying to take this thing, I guess, to the limit. You yeah. know, they're already setting up multiple seasons, but I'm I wasn't too mad about it. Yeah. I'm, I, I was like immediately when it was over, I was like one season two. Yeah. It's that's that's you guys you know. loved it. Steph loved it. Yeah. She she liked it more than I What's did. Stephanie's full name? <laughs> What's her address and P.O. box and <laughs> try to even, license plate number? Try to even this thing up. But uh, you got you agree, though. Must watch. PC Mike, you guys are going to watch it. I'll watch it. Oh, yeah. All right, Scott, thanks a lot. Sweet Tooth, you told us that last week. We watched it. It's on the list, and we'll probably have a full review coming soon. So it's that easy to do it. Um, send us what you guys are watching, and we'll get it featured. And Most as – Oh, heroes. Oh, sorry. That's his voicemail still in there from last week. <laughs> <laughs> Scott makes an appearance again. Mostly superheroes. If you have – leave a voicemail. Multiple episodes possible. Yeah, yeah. You could just be sneaking in. That was Let's, like a multiverse jump. I I miss that we didn't have a any voicemails today, so I'm gonna have to do a call out right now for somebody. Yeah, go yeah. ahead. Go ahead, please. All right. Let's go with my buddy Dan. He texted me a couple weeks ago about wanting to wanting to be on. So this is your call out, Daniel. Give us a uh, something to talk about. What's his last name? <laughs> we just we call him DP. That's all you need to know. Oh. All right. Well, DP, I like these on air call outs. It's 754 call log. It's nice and easy. Leave a voicemail. Tell us what you're watching, why you're watching it, or uh, anything you want to say. We'll play. <laughs> I mean, I guess I got to screen don't, those too. Don't just tell any embarrassing them. stories yeah. about me. That's all, that's all I ask. No, if you, uh, you know, if you, if you need an example, go back and listen to episode 25 because Scott did a great job yeah, telling awesome. us what he's watching. All right. Speaking of what you watch, and we agreed last week. 
We're going to be doing a couple features for you every every week we're doing the show. And it is time to jump multiverses. Let's go ahead and head over to the MCU. We're in phase four, talking about title number 26. It's the third phase four title of the year, and it is not stopping. More titles coming out. Um, if this schedule we have pulled up right now is correct, there's still seven more MCU things to come out this year in 2021, not to mention everything slated for the next couple years. Insane, and we are on the second episode of Loki. Tom Hiddleston is in his own premiere series. This is episode two titled The Variant 55 Minutes, which means it's about 40 minutes or so. I mean, it is a solid 13. I mean, it's a real like 13 minutes of credits. It's got that part's crazy. I mean, it's so long. You get the full, beautiful, like, design mm-hmm. credits, and then there's, like, a whole separate five minutes of, like, boring credits. Yeah, yeah <laughs> um, it was seven minutes of credits. That's what I, I counted today. Okay, so a lo- little less than what I said. And then probably still. a three-minute recap. You get a good recap in the beginning, like, at least two, at least one minute, two minutes. Um, let's talk about the description for this one, talk about where we picked up from episode one. Full spoiler alert for episode two. Right now, we're going to bust it wide open. Four to go on this thing, but let's go ahead and get our little review in right now mobius puts loki to work but not everyone at tva is thrilled about the god of mischief's presence so let's just kind of set it up it's gonna be a round table discussion pc mike the giggler myself talk about what we feel and uh maybe some predictions for next week um honestly at this point we're just kind of exploring what's happening so we picked up uh after episode one loki's basically come to terms with the, with what the tva is he understands that infinity stones don't really have a power they don't work in the TVA. These folks are controlling all the time, and he decides, like, you know what? I'm going to stick it out. Of course, we know Loki. He's probably going to try to take over at some point, right? He's like, you know, let's try to get – this is the greatest power in the universe. PC Mike said it last week. He picks up on this early. Well, if Loki sees the biggest power hanging right in front of him, he's going to go for it. In this episode, just real quick, I will say – I've talked about this a little bit. This episode was a lot slower than episode one. You know, we kind of talked about it. If you want to call it kind of a filler episode, this definitely had some dead space. A lot of Loki at the TVA doing research, helping Owen Wilson. Um, We do learn a little bit more about time travel and the intricacies of it. And just to get the big spoiler out of the way, because I want to talk about this whole thing at length, we do meet the other Loki at the end of this episode. And yes, we gave that spoiler alert. It's a female Loki. Andy, you were spot on. You called it. Um, I know there were theories going around, but we meet the female Loki. I don't know. We have to get that. We're gonna have to get this actress's name. I've never seen her before. Oh, I had to pull up one sec. Uh, go ahead. We'll have it ready. Um, and she has a plan of her own. Loki and Loki come face to face, and then he does follow her through a time door. Why the TVA is kind of scurrying from a time multiverse bomb that she sets off. Multiverses getting blown up. Well, how many of those bombs did she send out? Maybe a hundred of them. Let's get into it. Giggler, tell me what you thought overall. Episode two, you know, you watched episode one last week. We raved about it. How'd this one go for you? All right, Lady Loki, Sophia DiMartino. Sophia DiMartino, she is our female Loki, at least by the looks of it. I mean, this is Mm -hmm. the variant they led us to believe. Mm -hmm. She's got the Loki horns on her head. She's she's a blonde woman. I don't recognize her from anything. You never know what trick she has up her sleeve or him. Because they're Lokis. they. I don't know. What do we call it, Loki now? Well... Well, it depends on which one. Because, I mean, at this well, point. They, he could be whatever he or she wants it. That's absolutely time. right. And if there's an opportunity for someone for her to identify and say it out loud. But as of right now, I'm calling it. I've been saying to myself, female Loki and then our Loki is kind of what I've been calling Tom Hiddleston. Because yeah. he's like our timeline Loki, but not really. He's his own thing. Lady Loki, I think is what. Lady Loki. What the, the comic's name is. So Which makes sense. That's how that. that's how they refer to ladies, kind of in uh, yeah. Asgard world, Lady Sith. Yeah, but like, do you think they're gonna like have like a love thing? Do you think they're gonna, like into each other, like a romance? So doesn't yeah. Loki love himself? But then is that like? But it is himself. Is that incest? No, not if it's himself. No, I think that you have different <laughs> blood. You're in different blood, different multiverse. Um, what did you think of this thing overall? Did you enjoy this episode? Uh, yes. Yeah. Not as much time. as like you said. I I think I agree. It was a little bit slower than the last one um but it's picking up and it's kind of i think that's kind of how a lot of the uh what the the path was for the prior seasons for the last couple of shows it's like there's a few there's a little bit of like filler and then the last few episodes of the season just kind of blow up and if i recall correctly i listened to um interview with tom hiddleston the other day 
he says that be- end of episode four, beginning of episode five, it's is where you're going to just be wowed. So have that to look for. Well, uh, uh, that's great. That's all fine and dandy, but gosh, after Why living through have- WandaVision and living through Falcon Winter Soldier, I think you said it last week, PC Mike, but like all these interviews, okay, let's just watch mm-hmm. it and see what happens because I don't know, like the hype of each individual episode gets a little like, we said it earlier. You're like, I can't wait for Black Widow. I'm like, yeah, me too. Just going to see a movie that I haven't seen any part of, and then at the end of that movie, it'll be over, and we'll have to talk about it, and we won't see it again mm-hmm. for later. Right now, it's like, you can watch, we've already watched this episode twice today, Yeah, all of us. <laughs> like, it's just it's, it's just different, you it's know? Just, and you just, I feel yeah. like there's an overanalyzation to it, but also, I don't know, it's fun. <laughs> that's, that's why what, we're doing that's it. That's what we do, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, PC Mike, how'd this go for you? What'd you think of episode two? I thought it was fine. I think it's kind of a setup episode mm-hmm. um, to set up other things. I do like on the poster that little coin thing. That was oh. kind of a cool little part when it was out and like Loki was messing with the coin thing, like trying to hit it with the newspaper and Miss stuff. Miss Minutes? Like. Is that it? Is Her that name? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So Miss Minutes is giving him in the first 10 minutes of this thing, yeah. like the rundown. Yeah. She's quizzing him. And she's like hitting, he's like trying to hit it and then <laughs> it goes in the computer and stuff. I don't know. That was kind of fun. Um, the buildup and the switching of going into different people and kind of see um, there were some shocking reveals. I don't know. Wh- why were they in Oshkosh, Wisconsin in the 80s? Yeah, so let's just go and open it up. Like, this, that's anyone... where it opens up, right? This episode's in the 80s at like a Renaissance festival. Where was it again? Oshkosh, Wisconsin. And this is where the variant Loki they're hunting has made their last attack. It opens with an attack on these time cops, and this is where we see exactly what Mike was talking about. Apparently, she has like possessive powers. She can... She puts her fingers to your head, great little green light goes on, and the way I understand it after watching the entire episode is like she's possessing these people. There was a 19... 19- it's her. Yeah, that's what's wild is like the Tesseract, need, he, Loki needed the Tesseract to do that. Like To do what? Originally. To like basically possess people like in, in uh, Avengers. Yeah, but, he, but like, how, how, he's not really possessing him, I guess. No, he's just, no. He didn't use the Tesseract to possess. Pos- that's, the Tesseract's just the space stone. Didn't he? I mean, he hit him like um hawkeye with with the oh the, the mind stone yeah yeah my his bad. his staff my bad staff. my bad yeah i you're right i have it backwards no but you're right he needed an infinity stone yes. to do this he used the mind stone to control dr selvig to control hawkeye in avengers I this my, loki I got my stones mixed up like i do did a few weeks ago yeah, like i did the same thing <laughs> happens all the time actually last week's episode another correction <laughs> i somehow said seven stones in the last episode there are only six six Oops. infinity stones but you're totally right. This the OG Loki in Avengers had to use the Mind Stone to do this. This Loki almost seems like she can operate in her own body, but then also possess one person at a time, and they usually survive. Is what she says at the end. But why were they in Oshkosh? And like, what was up with this Renaissance fair? I just read nothing really significant happened in 1985 Oshkosh, Wisconsin, except Ronald Reagan visited there and talked about tax reform. Oh God! So I don't well, know if it's like a political man, thing. Man, that like sounds tax ex- reform. Ex- or exhilarate, <laughs> exhilarating. <laughs> I so. can't wait for episodes three to talk about tax reform. But then on this on this website, it talks about, or perhaps the writers chose 1985 solely so they could play holding out for a hero. I need a hero. Yeah. I did love that. I did like that a lot. Uh, that opening song. Um, well, they are jumping around a lot in this one. You know, it seems like does it matter where they go all the time? I mean, when they do finally track down the Loki variant, which let's just talk a little bit about how he does this. This is the middle of the episode where, again, a lot of downtime, a lot of Loki and Mobius walking around the TVA, which check out the shirt. Love the shirt. Mm. Thank you, Carrie. Just Carrie. Yeah, not last night. Yeah, right. I'm going to bleep that out. Uh, TVA shirt. She surprised me with this just two days ago after we recorded last week. I mean, it's it's he's literally wearing like the mm-hmm. outfit that he yeah. gets in this one, which he does look pretty slick in that jacket. Yeah, I do like that. Where jacket. did where was this from again? This is hot topic. Note to uh, my wife, Steph. FYI, please watch this on the YouTube on Monday while we're working, and make sure you buy me the shirt as well. Thank Needs you. to be like a thing where it's like click to buy this product, and I can make like five percent. That'd be pretty Ooh. good. <laughs> Uh, TVA, yeah. Uh, these guys are wandering around it. Loki's reading material. Owen Wilson, they basically put him to work. Like, he's working at the TVA. Yeah, like, which files can I see? And she, yeah, he's like, show me how the TVA was created. Show me how uh, the beginning of time. And the librarian's, like, restricted or confidential. Yeah. Confidential. But then Loki does read about Ragnarok. Because she gives him his file, right? Yes. That's she, the only file she gives he, he says, what can you give me? And she just gives him, I guess, a file on him. Yeah. Or maybe, I don't know, just 
and anything else. Yeah. And he reads about Ragnarok and he learns that basically if you time travel to a place where an apocalypse happens, you can do anything you want and it won't cause a nexus point. You can go there, you can do anything. How do they prove this to us? Well, they added on a scene that I just didn't really need. We talked about it, the Pompeii scene where him and Owen Wilson go back and Loki basically mocks all these people that get killed by the massive Pompeii volcano. And um, this just proves his point that he's correct. Okay, so then they discover, all right, well, the variant is hiding in the year 2050, really jumping ahead. Mm -hmm. A couple other things we want to talk about, too. I want to talk about Owen Wilson talking to his boss at the TVA. Yes, yes. And I also need to get her name down because I don't even know her name, and she's on the poster. I got it. You got it? Ravona Renslayer? That's the character name? That's the, uh, yeah, the, that's the character's name. Ravona the, uh, Rainslayer? Yeah. The, wow. the one in the office with like the cool three name. timekeeper statues behind her yes. and all the other like artifact stuff. Yeah. Yes, the artifacts. And Owen Wilson goes to see her twice. He, there's that weird scene with him putting his drink down, and there's like little rings on her table. Little water rings. Mm -hmm. You know, like if you don't use yeah. a coaster. Yeah. And she goes, Mobius. And he's like, Sorry about that. And like the camera really focuses on like him putting down the cup. And he, she goes, All those are from you anyway. I was like, It felt like it mattered. Maybe it didn't. And they zoned in on the pen that she showed him for that second. It was like, Yes. And the stuff she has. It was like Theodore Roosevelt High School or something like that. And yeah. I was like, or it was a like president or something like that. I don't know what it was. I was just like noted it for future. Obviously, I didn't get the president right, but well, and we even watched it twice. I'm, I was watching that <laughs> scene again, and I was like, I don't, I don't really know what's going on here. Regardless, though, o Mobius is asking some questions about the time people himself, the timekeepers. He goes, "How are the timekeepers doing?" And she's like, "They're doing fine. They're really worried about this Loki variant. It's very important to them that we catch this thing soon." And she's like, "This is your last strike with this Loki, the Loki that we're watching with Tom Hiddleston." She's like, he, I, you guys, you don't need to be using him in the field. And he has to like kind of beg her to do it. Mm -hmm. Literally, the second time he does it, Mo Mobius, he's like, all right, we got to go to 2050 to catch the, the Loki variant. And she's like, well, you can't bring this Loki with you and really fights him on it. She's like, no, you, you can't do that. And he's like, come on, you got to trust me. You know, Owen Wilson just being great in this. Um, it started to lead me to believe that maybe, what's her name again? That's going to be one Rav of the Ravana Renslayer? That Ravana might be up to something or... Not even necessarily a bad guy, but maybe she's, um, you know, Mobius and Loki are stumbling onto something they shouldn't quite know about. It kind of felt like that a little bit. So thinking about the rings. Yeah, go this ahead. This might be a stretch. Go ahead. We do have a film coming out later this year, Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings. Yes, yes. Could it be something where, is that a multiverse type thing where... What are the Ten Rings? Do you guys remember? No idea. It's, it's uh, I think he wears them on... In comics, I think it's, it's like finger rings, but he, in the movie, it looks like he's going to be wearing them like on his arms, like. And these ten rings have like powers. I think something like mm. that. Well, that's a good <laughs> question. How much we know? Trying to, trying to connect some rings. We're just spitballing, and there's not a ton of this episode. We're we're kind of we've already gave the big spoiler for the ending, but I'm like, I'm trying to explore anything else in the middle um, before we get to that big ending. Uh, any other thoughts around the TVA? Do you guys see anything else? We saw Miss Minutes again. Um, that boss. Um, all right, we'll jump into the end then. You know, if you guys think of anything else, let me know. But yeah. the big ending is they're in 2050. Giggler, you were spot on. I was like, 2050? Oh, cool. What are we going to see here? And they're at like a Costco. <laughs> I know. Same. And But nothing like out of the ordinary is really happening, I don't feel like. So if I did, it was an Easter egg and I missed it. But um, they catch up finally with this other variant, and it is female Loki, if we find out. And she is possessing people one at a time, but it also appears that she has her own body. She's got little Loki horns on her head, and Loki, our Loki, male Loki, says, join me, and we'll take down the TVA together. And she says, female Loki, I'm not into that. Uh, I've, I've considered it for eight to ten seconds, yep, yep. That was and great. the answer's no, and I've got my own thing going on. What's her own thing? Oh, she's collected 50 or so plus mm -hmm. of these time bombs that we learned about in episode one, where they just leave these behind and basically obliterate the timeline when something's gone wrong. They just obliterate it. That's their fixing it. Yeah. And they say it in this episode. Loki's like, yeah, uh, you guys tell, told me what happens with those bombs. Uh, it's like some so, like preached up, like sugar-coated explanation of, you know, it's how we heal the timeline. He's like, but I know that means it's all destroyed. I didn't realize that's what was happening when they left that behind. I thought that was like a magic reset. 
Same. But it's not. It's just disintegrating. They just burn it to the ground. Mm -hmm. I guess that's why they kind of zoomed in on like the helmet of one of the people that when in the um what was it Ash 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 whatever just yeah like it just away. kind of goes away. I was I was like there's a reason why they showed that. It's like the same as whenever you get poked by one of those sticks, it just tears you apart, like it just disintegrates you down. Yeah. Um. So what does she do? She takes fifty of these things. She programs it all to happen at one time, where all the bombs get like detonated. They turn purple. What are that? What happens next? They fall through their own little time door. And they get sprinkled all over time. There was a tweet about this. I tweeted it. Uh, you can go follow us on Mostly Superhero. And we retweeted it. I forgot who it was from, but it's it's on our page. And it lists all the places that got bombed. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to run down the list kind of the top of my head. It did not seem like the years mattered as much. It did not seem like I, I was matching up places with like movies. It didn't, yeah, it I was didn't trying to too. But. but here's some places. Uh, New York City was one. Um uh, there's a place in Egypt that was one, just kind of places all over the world. Here's places that not are on the world that were listed. Sakar, like two, like 1984. Uh, Vormir, uh, don't don't quote me on these years. I'm just kind of saying. Titan. Titan. Thanos' home. Ego. Ego. That's Guardians of the Galaxy 2. All of these time streams are opening up, and you can see it visibly on the screen back at the TVA, right? Any theories here, guys? Obviously, she has her own plan. This is very different. She runs through a time door at the end. All these bombs go off. Loki followers are through. Owen Wilson runs up with the TVA soldiers. Everybody's kind of running wild, but all these two Lokis in the episode, where'd they go? That's the big question. I want to hear theories about what this chick is doing. I don't know what she's doing, but I think what it's going to do for Disney and the MCU <laughs> is they just got some extra episodes to tie up all these loose ends all around the world possibly but just this is like so big been, but just like people have been thinking about captain america going hey i would love to see him go and finding all the stones yes like that show. give me that well yeah. now you have this option for disney but it's too much it almost seems like this is, is one of those things that they'll reset at some point that's what i'm scared of i mean disney just does pumps out star wars material like it's literally i mean it is their job but they just <laughs> keep pumping it out yeah why can't they do it with this and loki is the number one watched disney plus show of all time right now yeah, but I mean, they wrote it so long ago. But like the but now they're seen, and they're like, "Oh, guess what? We're gonna go set, clean up all this." All right, that's fair. That's fair. Could I get be. that. But from a story standpoint, what do you think? MCU ramifications, Andy? What, do, just, what do you see happening here? Like, especially episode three. Like, obviously, TVA is gonna be trying to fix this, but they in episode one they made it a point to say that there's there's no multiverse. There's one sacred timeline. No, nothing strays from it. Blah blah blah. Right. So I think that. That's her objective is to create the multiverse. I don't she's know why. Trying to, she's trying to like bring because the multiverse existed. There was a multiverse war according to the TVA, mm -hmm. and then we had to fix the timeline to the sacred timeline. Well, what is that? We've learned what that means. You're just, just you're just destroying yeah, yeah. other so timelines. They can't they can't fix this. Like they said, I think yeah. at some point in this episode, the, the like the lines they're diverging. Like once they hit that red area. And it's unfixable. Like they didn't show them hit that, but there's no way they can fix all these hundred things at one time with the mm -hmm. man, like the people that they have, unless they have, they're prepared for some sort of attack like this. But yeah, I, I know. I think that, um, I don't know. I don't know why though, why she's doing it, but I think that for sure, my opinion on like the, the timekeepers right now is that they're, they're not, they're not good. They're doing this for they're some either, they're not nefarious good. reason or like they're doing this to benefit themselves in some manner. Yeah, because the how. sacred timeline, what a, what a sell to be like, well, this is how things have to happen. That's the ultimate power. Like You're literally able to control everything that happens because you're like, well, if it doesn't follow the sacred timeline, you know. Was this the episode where they talked about Loki said, why don't you just go back right before yes. something happens? Yes. And they're like, well, you can't do that. He says, didn't you re uh, read the files? Didn't you do your training? And the reason was like, this is a proactive change in motion, and so now we're already the timeline's moving forward. So you have to jump in in real time as it's happening. So how are they going to do that? I don't know. Yeah, because it, it's like it's like you, it's like you <laughs> it's can never go good back. luck. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And this is only episode two. There's four to go. So th I mean, while this episode, like we said, was a little boring in the middle, like it had the, the biggest cliffhanger of like talk about affecting the MCU. There were just bombs dropped all over the galaxy in different points in time, like from 1500s to future, and these time bombs go off. 
Like, what are we going to see from this? This yeah. is insane. Is that the plan all along? Is that this this would make the multiverse and then whatever happens in Doctor Strange next year in March is basically them trying to fix it? It's like that's the it's like a cliffhanger at the end of Loki and all of us are still going like, oh, my gosh. Yeah. Like some, they got to fix this in a future title. Oh, we're going to see effects of this in other titles. We know Spider-Man No Way Home is going to have multiverse components. Maybe. Probably. Got to be. I mean, Doctor Strange is <laughs> in that movie. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think what else they said in that big last talk with Loki to Loki. You know, Lo- our uh, male Loki was like, come help me with the TVA. And she says that she's she's got her own thing going on. But it's just it, I think we're just we just don't have enough information to help predict it. We're just going to have to wait mm-hmm. and see. All right, pretty good. I mean, I love waking up on Wednesday mornings and yeah, watching Loki. Yeah. Uh, big news today. I think it was out of comic book. Uh, Wednesday's the day. Wednesday's the day for all MCU and Disney stuff, stuff uh, moving forward. So it looks like we made the right call. Except maybe you? movies? Movies will, no, I think they're going to, movies will remain the same, right? Friday. Like that's yeah. Thursday night, Thursday, Friday. Yeah. Friday. But I think shows are Wednesdays. Speaking of movies. Oh, it's in, it's in coming up. We're going to talk about it. I got the I got the slide. Don't worry. Can't wait. I can't wait either. We're going to talk about it. Okay, so this is episode two. Loki, any final thoughts from you guys? Any predictions you want to make? Anything sticking out? Until then, maybe we'll just wait till episode three. Do it again. I'm going to hold my tongue for now. I have no idea where this is going to go. Yeah, this one I, this one didn't give us a ton to work with. Yeah, we've, we've learned from our mistakes of too many obscure uh, predictions. I like this, though. I like just watching it and enjoying it mm-hmm. and then just talking about it and being like, okay, well, let's just wait and see. Like you said, even with those interviews, of people being like, "Just wait till episode four. I'm like, I don't need that. Yeah, I agree. I didn't. I I, I watched the interview and I was like, why do they even say things like that? <laughs> like, I just you know I'm shit. gonna watch. You don't have to like. Tip yeah, me you to don't. Watch. Yeah, exactly. I'm like, already watching. Uh, all right, cool. Loki episode three. We will be talking about it. Uh, we are taking a week off next week. We'll talk about that more and coming up. But either way, all that means is you're gonna have back to back Loki Loki reviews. On an upcoming episode, it's all happened on Disney+. Plus. Go check it out. And if you want to hear more about the MCU, TV and movies are more complicated than ever. The multiverse is real. It's happening. We help you with it. MostlySuperheroes.com forward slash MCU. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, it is time for the meat, the chunk, the sizzle. It's why you came. We're going to jump multiverses. We're going over to DC, and we're talking about Superman the movie. Stick around. We'll be right back. The meat. Welcome back from the break. This is Mostly Superheroes. I'm your host, Logan, here with PC Mike and The Giggler talking about mostly superheroes stuff with everything else out here that we find interesting from books to comics to TV shows to movies. You never know what it's going to be. And today is very, very special for the meat, the chunk, the sizzle. It's what you want. It's why you came. It's why you're here. Fellas, it's exciting. Today, we officially start our hashtag DCU Rewatch. You'll notice I did add a letter in there. We went, we were calling it the DC rewatch. I want to call it the DCU rewatch. That works for me. Only because the Mostly Superheroes page, which is still t- being created right now, if you try to go to it, it's not public yet. It's mostlysuperheroes.com forward slash DCU. So we have the okay. MCU page, DCU. This is the hashtag DCU for DC Universe rewatch. Makes sense. Makes sense? Yep. All right, well, let's kick it off with the arguably one of the most famous DC movies of all time, hands down, one of the ones that started it all. Let's kick it off with a little help from Wikipedia. This movie came out on December 15th, 1978, directed by Richard Donner, written by Mario Puzo, David Newman, Leslie Newman, and Robert Benton, from a story by Puzo based on the DC Comics character of the same name. We are talking about Superman the movie. It's the first installment in the Superman film series, an international co-production between the United Kingdom, Switzerland, Panama, and the United States, the, fa- the film stars an ensemble cast featuring Marlon Brando as Jor-El, Gene Hackman as Lex Luthor, Christopher Reeves as Superman, Margot Kidder as Lois Lane, Ned Beatty as Otis, R.I.P., who actually just passed away mm-hmm. the day that we Aww. actually watched this. Saw that. of uh, looked like Natural Causes. Ned Aww. Beatty uh, is the hilarious Otis in this film, and so many more. It depicts the origin of Superman, including his infancy as Kal-El of Krypton, son of Jor-El in his youthful years in the rural town of Smallville. Disguised as, a, as reporter Clark Kent, he adopts a mild-mannered disposition in Metropolis and develops a romance with Lois Lane whilst blasting the villainous Lex Luthor. This is the OG Man of Steel right here. It's Superman the movie. Let's give it up. <laughs> 
spoiler <laughs> I struggle with that word so much. Spoiler alert <laughs> right now for the spoiler, movie. Spoiler hardly know her. Oh man, Andy, that's good. Superman the movie. <laughs> spoiler alert if I can get it out. Again, big thanks to Wikipedia for the help with the little synopsis. We're gonna do this thing round table style. I have a whole list of my favorite parts. We're gonna break it open for you. Already gave that spoiler alert. I have seen this thing probably uh, 10, 15 times in my life. Let's start with UPC Mike kind of being, in my mind, I don't know if you're more DC than Andy, but I know you, you guys both love Batman, but I know that you really know DC. How did this watch go for you? I think that we have to take into account that, like we talked about, it's 1978. Okay, The graphics aren't going to be there. You, you would think the acting should be there, uh, but at some points it's not. Um, campy. I think before we even started this, Andy kind of said he was thinking Adam West Batman, which is kind of true. Um, but I do respect it for what it did because I don't think without this film and its success that we'd have all the movies that we have today. Uh, that was really well it's said. True. And you it's going to be hard props. for you to follow up, Giggler, but. No, I, that, you, you got to give it props there for sure, just for like kind of what, what this all started. So how many how many times had you seen it when you watched? Because you just watched it. This, we all watched it this week. Let's I would just get say it out of the way. a handful. Okay, but okay. I couldn't tell you like the last time I watched it from beginning to end. And you were probably younger. Yeah. when you saw it too, we're in our thirties. Yeah. How about you, Giggler? Is this a crowd favorite for you? How many times have you seen it? And uh, how'd this watch go for you this week? Well, this is the first time I've ever seen this movie. Wow, today. first time ever today. Today yeah. you watched yes. it today watched... for the first time ever in your life. I watched the first half last night, finished it off today, and. Uh, yeah, it was the first time. I don't know why I've never seen this. Maybe it's just because, my opinion, I guess Batman came out like 89 with Michael Keaton. That was like right around when I was born. So yeah. Maybe, but there was not really Superman movies coming out around that time. Yeah, this was um, 10 years later. So. And where do you watch it? Like you'd have to have the VHS yeah. or the DVD, you know? Yeah, now we yeah. now we can click on HBO and watch all this stuff. I've said it before in 2006 <laughs> for my birthday uh, our buddy Nathan bought me the DVDs so I could watch these. You're, yes. you're right. It would have been a lot tougher. But anyway, but, how, well, how'd this go for you as a first time watch through this thing? Yeah, it was uh, not as bad. Like, I was going in with pretty low expectations. I see. I see. I, I just, I've never been a huge Superman fan, but I'm definitely more intrigued now about the kind of, what what is there five? There's five in this like saga, I guess? Or? I guess, actually, there are five because uh, Superman Returns is part of this story. Really? Yes. Okay. With uh, Brandon Ruth. Oh, shit. Okay. Wow. Um, who, so, made, yeah. who reprised the role in uh, the CW during a <laughs> Crisis on Infinite Earths crossover? I do recall this, but even at that point, I was just like, "All right, that's a pretty." He looks the part of Superman, but like, yes, it didn't make, ever make me want to go watch these. Like, I came, I was born and like, talking about Christopher Batman eighty nine, yeah, Batman eighty nine with Michael Keaton was there. It's like this is comparing these two movies is not even close to me, anyways. But, I agree. I agree. Um, but yeah, I definitely am more excited because a lot of stuff um, in this movie. I didn't know happened already. Like in this, I know the Superman lore of like, rever like reversing the earth. I was like, that's yeah. Spoiler alert. <laughs> no, we already gave it. We gave that spoiler alert. Yeah. We're breaking it open. You can, we can talk about all the parts of it. And I definitely want to talk about time travel in this movie. I want to talk about all the weird stuff. There's funny stuff. Oh, God. Like there's like some off the wall things. You guys are like the nicest two guys. Like I swear. It's like, I understand this was 1978. There is some flat out corny stuff in this movie, but Watching this thing, especially like fresh this week, like sitting down to be like, I'm gonna watch this, you know, not just like on in the background, like when I was yeah. 15. I was, I'm gonna watch this movie as if like I'm in the theater seeing this movie for the first time. It's not bad. It's a movie that teaches you about Superman. Hey, what we talk about a lot on this show, origin stories are tough. Mm -hmm. So not only are you going to have to convince people that Superman is real and he can fly and he's cool, but it's his origin story. So it's just already a little convoluted. But, man, you talk about campy. You talk about some of the funniest things that happen in this thing. Like, some of the powers. Like, I'm really, like, I have so many questions about um, how does he change into a Superman suit? It just it just kind of happens. Like, yeah. Whenever he, like, if he thinks about it. He runs somewhere, like an alley, and does it. <laughs> or just flies. Yeah, he was flying down as in a suit and then changed into his suit, Superman can't suit. see through lead. Yes, can't see through lead. Um, what do you guys think of Gene Hackman's Lex Luthor in this movie? I thought it was awesome. Amazing, right? I think that's the best. Yeah, he was the great. best person in the whole film. I'll give it up, man. That's one thing I didn't really catch on, I guess, in my Lex Luthor history. I just assumed he was just bald all the time. Right. Yeah. And then just to see that 
kind of how. And that... he's wigging out this whole movie. He's wearing wigs. Mm-hmm. So that's that's just something. A little I mean, eye opening thing to me that he he just constantly talks to Otis and Miss. I want to say Schumacher. I don't think that's it though. Is it? Uh, it's pretty close. Test maker. Test maker. Yeah. Eve. He Test just. Maker. He's like, do you? He's like, you. Do you guys uh just bask in my presence in awe all the time? Like he just <laughs> talks like he talks like that through the, the whole movie. He just calls them dumb. He talks down to them, but he's also brilliant. He's witty. Mm-hmm. I didn't. I was kind of confused why they were in the sewer. Did you guys understand like why he's living down there? It was like the price, right? He had like got it for a good deal. He loves real estate. Loves real estate. That's his whole plot is to blow up the fault line and have California fall off, and then he has the most expensive real estate in California because he already owns it. He's already owns. He it. bought uh, unvaluable desert land mm-hmm. that will become beachfront. Yes. Yeah. Otisville. I, <laughs> I thought that was just trying to make him look cheap. I guess I don't know. Yeah, and they, because they do kind of make him look a little cheap in this, and it's like. I don't know. It's fine. I thought he was all right. I do. I think he. I think him as Lex Luthor is is fun. It is awesome. Better than Jesse Eisenberg. Oh man, yeah. I'll agree with that. I'll agree with that. <laughs> That's I, not hard to do. But. I, I will say, uh, watching this movie. I mean, of course, it was the inspiration for Man of Steel, starring Henry Cavill. Mm-hmm. But like, not just. I mean, it's like every part of the movie, they just did it in Man of Steel, like in the same order. Like the journey of him, Clark Kent, going to the Fortress of Solitude for the first time. Like in this movie, he like puts on a winter coat and he like you see him in the snow for a minute. Well, Man of Steel, they like flush it out. They're like he's on a ship somewhere and he saves uh, people from an oil rig. So like it was, I did see like in the same order, Man of Steel. I don't know. It felt a little. I don't know. We're not talking about that movie right now, but I I don't want to say it's ripped off from this. It's a Superman story. I'm just saying though. I'll have similarities, but it's pretty close. Very similar is what I'm getting at. Too similar. Too similar, yes. Of like the same (laughs) things in the same order, but just told in a different way is kind of what I thought about. That's a good call. Um this one though, I man, is it John Williams that that scored this? Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh my gosh. That's my number one favorite music. I'll give it up. I mean (laughs) opening opening sequence, I was just just re- raging. I was like, oh my god, ready for to just run into a brick wall and watch Superman. Love the graphics too, <laughs> but like just the names coming in and the, like the yes, the the, the like has the stream tail mm-hmm. behind it. The music, I mean, the music. I mean, if you put this music to any movie, you'd be like, this movie, even if it was bad, I feel mm-hmm. like the music just really makes it. Um, I remember having this as my ringtone on my Motorola Razor. <laughs> I don't know if you remember, Mike, but I even had remember the Nokia, the square Nokias that oh, we yeah. had. Oh, I yeah. like had I had a Superman case. It was like mm-hmm. one of the first times you could ever even have a phone case, and it wasn't the case; it was the phone like shell that you had to like yeah. take apart. Yeah, the brick. It was a Superman, and I had red like see through buttons. He was the coolest. Yeah, it was cool. Um, but this was the movie, though. This was the story that got me pumped up about it. This was the suit. This was the music. Um, I'll just go through some of my parts I wrote down. I just thought, like, man, Lois Lane's apartment was really, really nice. She's the best reporter there. She is, but she's, like, still working her way up. This was before her big interview with Superman, Mm -hmm. which, I mean, as far as an interview with Superman goes, it was really just, like, a sexual tension. Very. Yeah. It was all about, like, from both sides, sexual looks. Yeah. A lot of, there's a little, little, there's some sexual things in Mm -hmm. this movie. I felt bad, though. I don't know, just me looking at it. I felt bad for Clark Kent in that situation. Yeah. She has she wants nothing to do with Clark Kent. Won't even look at him. She wants Superman. It's I don't know. And he almost felt and bad. He, for and him. he almost starts to tell her. And yeah. then he's like, No, I won't. He smiles like when he's back at Clark Kent, like to pick her up and he's like Hey, you know what though? In this. that in that moment, I was like, Christopher Reeves is so good. He was awesome. Unbelievable. Like give it up. I mean, of course, our R. I. P. And this guy's a legend. That scene was when I was like, oh my gosh. Like, mm-hmm. I really did feel like I had forgot that he was Superman. And Clark Kent was like there being all sad and goofy. But then he stands up and I'm like, oh my God, there it is. The little tra- just little posture, little yeah. smile. He definitely did awesome because I think that's the, the parts of him. Like, he just plays the like the awkwardness so perfectly yes. of, of Clark, Clark Kent and like the awkwardness of just like, when Superman's like being interviewed by her, just like him, just kind of the awkwardness of just him being hanging out with like mortals and stuff like that. Yeah, just but walking with his hands behind just his like, back. What's up? <laughs> just flew up here. I, I did. Oh, go ahead. I also like the part like him in high school. 
Yes. Because like, you always kind of miss that part. I know you get it in like Smallville and stuff. Well, Smallville, that's the whole thing. Th- I thought about yeah. that with Smallville. I was like, someone watched the first 10 minutes and go, they go, there's a show here. Yeah. And they were right. And then how he's like hiding his powers and like. Yeah, that part where he runs. Runs and home. And they're like, how'd you get here? That happens in Smallville. Does it? And there's a lot of other things that directly happen in Smallville in this movie. When he throws the Fortress of Solitude crystal, they do that in Smallville, but there's like a whole season that leads to that <laughs> moment. But I just thought it was cool, like him punting the football and like him yeah. being bullied. Yes. When he really doesn't have to be bullied, but he's trying to hide who he is because his dad's like, hey, we got to assimilate to what we need you to be. And that, uh, his dad in this, um, you know, he's he tells him, he's like, you're here for a reason. Mm-hmm. Like, you're going to do something great one day. Those are like almost verbatim what Kevin Costner says in Man of Steel. I didn't want to make this about comparing stuff, but I'm just, I think what's yeah. happening is. Watching this with the eyes I have now, I can't help but correlate it to what was yeah. created after, which this is the inspiration. You're yeah. seeing it. The wow. comics are the source material. This is the movie they probably yes. took a lot of stuff yeah. from. And then Yeah, comic book fans are hearing me talk, and they're like, yeah, that's Idiot. how we've been feeling our whole Since lives. Since 1938 <laughs> or whenever it came out. And watching like bad variations of it all, too. But this one, this one's okay. Um, I'm just, I'm, go ahead. If you I have, have some, I got all some questions that I just need to ask for. The real fans of, of this that have Let's, seen this movie multiple times of meaning hopefully you guys can answer this. I was hoping like, you guys had questions. So when they leave him from first off, Krypton, they call it Krypton on so, Krypton, but we call it Krypton. Is that yeah. is that just like a thing? That's just most, that's their Krypton accent. They just <laughs> call it Krypton. Okay. But yeah, Krypton we haven't even talked about the opening sequence. Go ahead, Giggler. So like they send him off and it's like he He's age. He ages on his way to Earth. Is that is that? Yeah, what yeah, yeah. It looks like he's a little baby. Mm-hmm. So Krypton's. I mean, Krypton's. Light years. Krypton's come is crashing down. Okay. Jor El tries to tell everybody, and then they just won't believe him. They like, won't believe him. They're like, "You're crazy. We just won't hear it." So that was just the time the planet blows up, and then he puts a baby. He in just there. aged he, on his way there in the ship. He ages to like you know okay. maybe four. <laughs> that's like <laughs> four. That's the hardest part of the like they just jump times like a bunch of times, and, and it, you're like, okay, now he's this. Well, okay. it must have been four light years or something. From- yeah. <laughs> yep. There we go. You know science good, yeah, too. I'm good at math. Any other questions? <laughs> Any other brain busters? <laughs> um, why didn't Jor-El leave as well if he knew it was why, coming? Why not just, yeah, why not take a couple ships? Yeah. Well, they said that, he said that, in, like, when he was in court or whatever, that they wouldn't go. So he's just, he's just a man of his word. Um, he said him and his wife wouldn't go. He didn't say anything about. He was like, true. He just. He, but why do you lump his wife? But in? yeah, like yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, I know. I won't go. Go, go, go. Just get out of here. Just yeah. run. Um, that's another thing. This movie opens up with the trial on General Zod. Yep. And the other two, they get put in a pane of glass. Yeah. The uh, um, that was weird. The Phantom Zone mm-hmm. is as it's called, which I don't think they. I don't know if they even call it the Phantom Zone. That Phantom Zone flipping through space like that. That literally makes a appearance. Yeah. In Smallville. Yeah. Like, as is. Superman 2, get ready, because it happens. Oh, I know. <laughs> and, well, that's, yeah, because, like, General Zahn. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's the whole uh, trial happening. Again, not trying to compare everything, but I don't know if Man of Steel was just meant to, like, remake this movie now that I'm looking at it. Like a better version? It's I don't know. literally the same. It opens the same way. Same trial, same words, but, like, in Man of Steel, much more violent, more to it. He's like, I will find him. I always remember that part. Yeah. That's so great. Actually, I like Man of Steel. But I like Man of Steel, too. Yeah, the, so Krypton gets... I mean, I was crazy. I was like, this is too relatable. Someone just not... You know, it's like, hey, there, there are, this planet's dying. No one's listening. Right. Um. What else? Uh, yeah, Baby Superman was just the best part. When he lifts the truck? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Was he nude? <laughs> oh, like yeah. The whole he, time? Oh, I meant to say, there's like a super... There's, his penis is in there. Yeah. So there's a Superboy penis in here. I was what? like, do, do we need that? No, like no, he's all, the, he's all the way naked holding yeah. the truck. And I was like, and you we... see a, there's a little toddler just full on naked. 19, like, I mean, 1978. Couldn't go like belly button up for the boy? Like, <laughs> I mean, in, I mean, in post, just blurred out. Weird. Yeah. Weird. Yeah, I, that shook me. I was like... That hit, yeah, me too. I, I thought the same thing, Mike. Um, the running teenager... That was the most ridiculous scene I've ever seen. So you're talking about when he's in Smallville? And, and he's like running, he, where he was running from one place to the other, and they were like, the how'd car. you get here? Yeah. I like But that. he's just like. <laughs> oh, like how it looks? Uh, yeah, he looks so stupid. <laughs> that improves. It was, I was 1978. Like, I watched it, and I was like, I want to see Logan um, like do his impression of impersonation of this run because i feel like you could i can barely even i can barely even see it i must have like looked down at my phone for a hot second because i I feel like i I feel like i looked up and he was he was leaning against the truck um what about um 
All right, let's talk about Miss Tessmacher. A couple things. <laughs> I like whenever Superman has that kryptonite around his neck and he's falling down to the, mo- the water and mm-hmm. then she helps him, but before she helps him, she just gets, slips a kiss. Yeah. Slips, a, sl- slips him a kiss. <laughs> um, and then later she gets a bunch of soldiers to pull over and come think she's in a car accident because Lex Luthor uh-huh. is trying to get on that torpedo, yeah. the missile, so it, I guess so he could navigate it to where he wants. And she's just on the ground and all the soldiers get around her Yeah, and yeah. they all look down and, want, and the, like, the general's like, Mouth to mouth. And the young man's like, okay. And he goes, no, I'll do it. I wouldn't ask you to do anything I wouldn't do. And then he goes down to give her mouth to mouth. And what do all the soldiers do? Turn around. They turn around and face <laughs> outward. And I was like, oh, God. 78. Oh, it's 1978. <laughs> Weird. Ugh, oh, boy. That that does not sit no. well in uh, in today's climate. But um, yeah, let's talk about the big part, right? I mean, I would say that the movie kind of drags for me a little bit two-thirds of the way in. It's a long movie. It's like two hours and 15 minutes. Yeah, I didn't expect it, it to is. be that long. Yeah, geez. It, it, it's how long? Two, two hours and like 223. The runtime's 223, but probably like 215. Yeah. Yeah, and I mean, you're two-thirds away in. They do like the interview. There's that weird Lois Lane monologue when they're flying. Mm-hmm. There's another thing about powers. So you can just fly as long as I'm touching you. He's super strong, though. I mean. Yeah, but wouldn't it like break her finger? I don't know. Anyway, she has that weird internal monologue where she's like thinking through what she's thinking while she's flying, and it's just like okay. But when it does start to come back for me is the third act in mm-hmm. the movie with uh, the big plan coming to p- into play. Lex Luthor sends his missiles. There's two of them, and Superman saves basically everybody, but Lois Lane dies because her car falls into the fault line, suffocates her. What does he do? He flies up, and even though there's like Jarrell. In his head, his dad from Krypton going, it's forbidden. It's forbidden. But he, his, his dad's, he takes his dad's advice. He, he takes his Earth dad's advice of you're here you're for, for a reason. You're here for a reason. And then he backs that Earth up. He spins around, spins around, spins around. The Earth's rotation shifts the other way. And then time starts to rewind. And then he puts it back and he gets down and he saves her. Just like the Snyder Cut all over again. Yeah, just a do-over. <laughs> just a big do over. What'd you think of that, Andy? That, I mean, as soon as I saw that she died, I knew that's how it was going to be fixed. But it was still cool to see. I didn't realize it was that early, like in the because you knew it was coming. That, I knew it happened the, sometime. Because like people that. had talked about knew, it. Yeah, I knew. I've seen it from like I think cartoons or something. Mm-hmm. I remember watching a lot of Superman cartoons when I was a kid. Yeah, not so much uh, these movies though. <laughs> What'd you think, Mike, about the uh, the saving scene? The, I feel like this is a controversial scene. People are like. What a cop out. I mean, I could see movies now doing it with multiverses. Yeah. And like, it's the same type of thing. Like yeah. just, They just did it in a different way. They did it in one movie. Yeah. They just backed it up in real time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Just got to take it what it is. It's like, a comic. It a <laughs> it's true. It's cheesy, true. Cheesy, kind of campy yeah. movie, but I still enjoyed watching it more than I thought I would. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. I, I do think that the, uh, man, that journey to Superman is so quick from when he's a teenager. It just happens mm-hmm. so quickly where it's just like, okay. And he was there for like 11 years, 15 years or something. They had to fit it in, though. Like, they put an origin story in with this first movie. It wasn't... Well, did you catch how they did it, though? It's like, welcome to the Fortress of Solitude. I'm jor I'm your dad. Time to go to training. And that's what happens in mm-hmm. Smallville. He has to, like, go through... He goes to the Fortress, and it's like he's in a beam, and his brain's, like, downloading everything. Yeah. That's what happens here, but they're just like taking you through space, and you're just going through space, and he's just Jorel's just talking and talking. Yeah, but apparently like, he was at the fortress for like ten years, and that's yeah, why he yeah, looks different. They, I think they said twelve. Twelve, yeah, something like that. Crazy, just crazy, just crazy. I mean, for a fan that doesn't know or like hasn't been watching these forever, like 1978, you're in the theater and <laughs> they have to fit it all in. And yes, same problems they have today. Mm-hmm. Today. Some things that stood out. Yeah, go ahead. I'm. I think like, I'm almost at the end of my list. Stat wise, Marlon Brando made 19 million dollars for this. Oh shoot! You know what? Uh, that's that's amazing. Can you pull up the budget and box office? That's box like, office. They made 300 million. They made 300 million, and it cost 50. And it was a 50 million dollar. 55 maybe. Hey, 55 yeah. million dollars. That ain't no joke. 1978. No, but, but 300 million, like it made superhero movies. This was the kickoff. Yeah. This but, was okay. This can work. Yeah, Marlon Brando was on screen for what ten minutes? Yeah, I didn't even know that was him. You're, yeah, it's yeah. Him, and he's only he's on the he's in the first ten minutes of the movie, and then he's the face. But he was supposed to be in Superman two, 
Got in a dispute, sued him. It's not even in Superman 2. At all? Not at all. Wow. Is there another jor I don't remember. I don't, well, I don't remember. Well, we're going to know because um, we're going to watch it. Yep. And then he did this as a favor because the screenplay was by Mario Puso. Okay. Yes. He wrote The Godfather. Wow. And Marlon Brando won his one of his Academy Awards for The Godfather. For The Godfather. There's your connection. Yep. All right. Um, I think I Oh, I did think it was a funny part with Lex Luthor whenever like Otis messes up the first time on the missile, so then they have to do another plan and they just do like an oversized load that's like blocking the bridge and mm-hmm. Lex Luthor's in a cowboy hat going like, "How are y'all doing today?" <laughs> it was like, "Okay, yeah, this is this is like straight out of an animated Superman cartoon like for a movie." Yes. Or for a kid, I mean. Like Ned Beatty. Yeah. Awesome actor didn't probably need to be in this film. I get the slapstick, like the com. Yeah, you're the right. Comedy relief, because like, why yeah. is he working just over with- the top? Why is he working with such idiots? Yeah, like not even just like basic idiots, like just full on idiots. Mm-hmm. Is it? I feel like it's to make himself feel better about himself. You're like right. Ego maniac like that. I feel like that's just a like a yes trait. man. He wants a yeah. yes man, but he but- could find one that's not as. That was what I thought. Yeah. Well, Lex that. Luthor in the comics is a mastermind. Yeah, you know. And, and he's like the ultimate Batman villain. Batman Superman, he's a mastermind. Yes. Do you think that's why Jesse Eisenberg had all that hair? Like Before? Yeah. yeah. What do you mean? Like, why? Like um, Gene Hackman's character in this, he had all, he had the hair. What do you think? Oh, okay. I see what you're saying. I wonder if it's a callback to that, like an homage. It pro- I mean, if I look at Man of Steel, it's just like a copy yeah. of this, just put it on with like a dark filter. <laughs> do we need to do Man of Steel next week so we can just do a direct comparison? I mean, it's that's an interesting idea. <laughs> and then it'd be fun to watch Smallville too if I could get you guys to watch all 10 seasons of that. Jesus. Jeez. <laughs> I mean. I might. We might, have to, we might have to like do that one day and we just do like a Smallville limited series where we just like, that's all, that's all it is. Because <laughs> I mean, that's a lot of TV to watch. And I could talk about every episode for sure. All right, Giggler, any other thoughts? Uh, it's first time. Did Steph watch this with you? Was there, did uh, Rachel no, watch this with you, Mike? I tried. It was just me. Okay. I had to watch some of it on my phone just because they were watching something on TV already. But Oh, man, dedicated to the pod. <laughs> it's whatever. Uh, but, yeah, I think uh, I- I'm definitely excited for to watch Superman 2 next, like, for next week. Yeah. Yeah, I can tell you don't have to be like too excited. I mean, no, I'm. I'm did you enjoy this where you're like you are excited, I or thought, did this like did this? How did how did this guys make you guys feel about the DC rewatch? I mean, you know, I it's like, like that, it was an older movie, right? We're talking about doing older movies. I I had a lot of fun kind of visiting yeah, something yeah, old. I what did, is I did too. what's this symbol mean? Isn't it a sign for hope? It awesome. gave me a sign. For yeah, hope. that's oh, got to take it. Sign for, for hope is. coming right there from the Kryptonian symbol. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's do some ratings then. Tell us how you really feel, Andy. All right. I'm making you go first. Yeah, this is tough. I like this is just so different from everything that we are we've talked about in the past, but I went with a 2.3. Wow, yeah. That's That's that that that's about what I had in my head for. You. I mean, it's for sure what like the lowest that of anything that I've talked about on the show probably, but but uh, but it has to be honest. Yeah. Like yeah. I mean, and you you you're a uh, DC fan. It's not like you're not a superhero guy. You're on this podcast. I feel like, you know, if you didn't like superhero stuff at all, like maybe it'd be even lower. You know, you like you t- you you come into this knowing everything about Superman basically. Yeah. And that's an honest rating. No, it was and it was a good that's that's I think why I enjoyed it so much. Like it, the origin story like feature of it, like that's it did a great job of uh, of doing that and now I'm kind of excited to see what what villains that they bring in or what it, or is it just Lex Luthor the whole time? I have no clue, but Yeah, you don't know what's going to happen. Yeah. So that, that's exciting, but all right, uh, PC Mike, let's uh, lay it on us. Overall thoughts and a rating. Overall thoughts, like I said earlier, I think it started, I don't think without this film that you have all the films that we have today. Um, box office success, instant stars, Christopher Reeve, massive star, great Superman, Gene Hackman, great Lex Luthor. Um, there's some parts that, you know, don't really fit, but overall I think it's a good superhero movie, especially for the time. Um, for me, with all that being said, I'm going to give it a 3.0 on the dot. Well said. Solid rating. Mad respect for sure. Um, I'll take this home. Wrap this up. Superman the movie. Yeah, this uh, from a storytelling perspective, this thing really does its job. And it was what, the first of its kind. Like Mike said, this kicks off superhero films because of the success. It opened up the doors to... Everything that's happened around us in the last 
uh, you know, 40, 50 years now, it started around the same time as this. So it's I, I feel like we owe a lot to this. I think that they did a great job in terms of the music looks great. He does, I mean, his flying scenes look pretty legit for 1978. Agreed. Um, the Fortress of Solitude was really great. Mm-hmm. And I, I was, you know, just like, I can't not love the Superman story. I love the whole thing from Krypton to Kal-El. And obviously fans out in the world agree. Otherwise, there wouldn't be shows like Krypton, Smallville, and we see the DC being made to this day. But it all started right here with Christopher Reeve. So really do appreciate it. It's not one that I'm going to be re- re-watching all the time. One of those that's every few years whenever I just have that feeling or maybe when we do another rewatch like this. Um, I'm going to be right between you guys. I gave this thing a 2.8. If high school me knew that Mike, I said your last name too. I'll bleep <laughs> that up. I'll edit it out. If, if this guy like was rating a Superman movie higher than me, it just doesn't make sense, but like that was that was honest. I think I'd look and see what it did, and in my mind, I'm a teacher, so a 3.0 out of four, that's a 75. percent I gave it a C, but I still, yeah, <laughs> you're right, you're right, and I and I you know I didn't even give it above a C then. I'm I'm below it. No, you're right there. 2.8 is close. I don't know. I'm feeling guilty. I guess I'm feeling guilt. I'm like Superman's my boy. He's been my guy forever. Can you explain what your first like? Why was he your your favorite? Like, I mean, as a kid, curious, this honestly. movie was insane. Like, like th- is I this movie it. like your biggest like Superman influence as a kid? I mean, as a kid, yeah, awesome. for sure. Yeah, and then just... the and then the animated series was like after that, and I love the Justice League animated series. Um, and then Smallville. I mean, Smallville brought it home for me. Okay, and I've watched Smallville many times. Let's put this in perspective. It won the Academy Award for Best Visual Effects. Wow. In 1978. <laughs> That's so crazy. So, Thank yeah, God. there you go. Like, the best one. Technology is awesome. The Saturn Awards. It won Best Science Fiction Film, Best Actress, Best Music, Best Special Effects. Yeah, this thing just like, this thing for brought 1978. It, this thing brought it home. But, like, I almost like not knowing that coming into this discussion. Mm-hmm. because didn't either. Because we're going for the re- experience, right? Yeah. We're all going for, like, I watched this. Where does my rating fall and why? I mean, we just watched like Avengers Endgame and Loki, and then we go back and watch this in 1978. It's hard to compare. That but... is so true. You're mixing these this old stuff in with like literally Loki came out today. Yeah. <laughs> today. It's hard to compare, <laughs> but. All right, Superman the movie, our first in the DC rewatch, DCU rewatch, excuse me. You know, you can find these and the rest of the DC titles that'll be coming. We got a lot more happening, a long list to get through old stuff, new stuff. DCU rewatch mostly superheroes.com forward slash DCU. One and done. Just like that. How many more do we have left? Oh, no, really that's what's crazy. I mean, if you go off that kind list, of like 80, if, undetermined. If we go off that list that we pulled up, yeah, I mean, it was, it was, and there's more than that too. And hell, there's old MCU stuff we haven't seen. Plus, we're not just limiting ourselves to those two categories. We're also open to any old title, new title. I love this. I love that we're mixing it up. Speaking of which, let's talk about what's coming up on the show. Few things happening. Uh, first of all, we have a spinoff on Spotify that allows us to play the music from Spotify using a tool called Anchor. You can do it yourself if you're interested. Uh, we have a show called The Music Show, where we play the music from TV shows and movies that we watch. We just did Gone in 60 Seconds with Nicolas Cage, Angelina Jolie, And uh, we have the QR code pulled up right now. You can scan this with your phone if you're watching on Facebook or YouTube. It'll take you to that show on Spotify, and it was pretty good. Probably 10, 11 songs. This movie came out in the year 2000. Um, Basically, Fast and Furious ripped off this movie. (laughs) It's my my takeaway. I love this movie. Yeah? When's the last time you saw it? Probably a couple years ago on TV, like flipping through. Pretty good. Memphis. Memphis Reigns. Memphis Reigns. What about you, Andy? You seen this? Uh, it's been years. But it, you just remind, reminded me that Fast 9 comes out, or whatever it's called, F9. F9. Coming out like in a week or so. Yeah. I'm telling you, this was like the OG Fast and Furious. Like oh. You're watching this, and you're like, this is... like It's almost all the characters are there, almost. <laughs> Eleanor. Eleanor. Yeah, the Mustang. He's obsessed I know. It's, it's a cool take. It's like a story that all them taking the cars and... I don't know. 50 cars, one night, save yep. my brother action movie turn it off nicholas cage is a maniac nicholas cage is awesome 1984 through 2006 i mean just <laughs> just i mean and you watch him i mean he is 
he is out of his mind, but like so dedicated and like all in on this character. The weirdest uh, monologues, one offs, but the music is really good. So there's some pretty good artists in there. Um, go check it out. That's at mostlysuperheroes.com forward slash the music show available on Spotify. Uh, MCU, of course, happening all the time. As we said, Phase Four is here. Uh, Black Widow is our next title after Loki, which we're watching right now, of course, four episodes to go. Black Widow comes out July 9th. Giggler, we bought our movie tickets. Mike, you better, you better join us. I need to see what I'm doing July 9th in a month. It's, a eight, I, it's the 8th, the Thursday. It's the 8th, though. It's the Thursday before. So I guess it's just like a, pre, a pre-premiere? a like I, I, I do this for every movie. I don't know. I don't understand. Because it used to be at midnight on Thursdays, but yeah. now it's 7 p.m. They, there I still is a midnight show, that. too, really? which is crazy. Yeah, I was like, well, we're going to see it at 7 p.m. at Ronnie's. Yep. God, you're giving away a lot of personal information today. Last names, <laughs> where you're going to be on what dates. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, Why? Yeah. Does somebody want to kill yeah. us? Hey, like, I don't know. Yeah, right. <laughs> like the fans are just roaring. They're trying to bring, bring down the door. No, we'll probably be wearing Scott. Some, we'll probably, hey, Scott, we might. <laughs> he's waiting outside. Yes, we'll be sitting in row J seats. Don't 11. tell him. Don't tell him what seats. We do know our seats. <laughs> I was joking. I don't. But. I remember him. I remember. Very him. close to Jay. <laughs> we'll be a mostly superhero stuff. Actually, I think what we're gonna do. I thought about this. Uh, I thought about like interviewing a couple people as they walked out to give their live reaction to the movie, and like what you, somebody you guys you could record it and stand there and like just if somebody wants to, we'll hold it up the phone, and yeah. we could do like live interviews from people out in the real world about how Black Widow went. That'd be dope. What do you think about that? You know, um, like people don't mind being harassed at the theater right after a movie. I don't know. Are we are we that that stage of the pandemic? I don't know. If I'm like, Post hey, you want to be on the life? most popular podcast ever? Yeah. I mean, who wouldn't say yes to that? That's what I'm saying. Maybe people are camera shy. You, you could like know. NBA interview him and like be away. That's what I'm thinking. Just give a little distance. You know, you still yeah, socially no, distance. it'll be fine. Um, but that's coming. Black Widow, can't wait to see it. My first time back to the theater all year. MCU flick. Love it. And uh, yeah, seven more things coming out this year. Shang-Chi, The Eternals, Hawkeye, Miss Marvel, and Spider-Man. We'll be talking about all of it. We just did our first title for the DCU rewatch. Got a typo in here, of course. It's going to be tough keeping that straight. You know what? You can use either one. DC rewatch, DCU rewatch. We'll just use them both. Um, we, but we just did Superman the movie. I don't know if we'll do Superman next or if we'll want to like do a mix a mix up. We'll talk about it. We'll let you know. We don't have to decide today. We'll uh, we'll table it and make sure we have it planned for you. Let you guys know plenty ahead of time. And then, of course, the brand new schedule is up at mostlysuperheroes.com. New stuff coming out uh, on Mondays. New episodes. So this one, uh, hopefully you're listening to this at the beginning of your week. Hope it's going well for you. And I don't know. I then like these. I like we're these. already two days away from another Loki. Yeah. Like right now, you're listening. Loki's in two days. Um, but big announcement right now, just for you listeners. We are taking a break. Next week, uh, me and the lady are taking a much-needed drive. I won't tell you exactly where. <laughs> <laughs> No, we're going to Montana, though. Going to Montana, and uh, we're taking the long way. We're going to drive. We're going to do the American road trip and see a bunch of places, but taking some much-needed R&R, all that means for you guys is one week off. So next week, enjoy the break. Come back and see us uh, in July. It'll be the first week of July that we'll be back, and uh, it'll be two episodes of Loki we'll be talking about that time. So we'll be able to just do back-to-back. You guys came over today and rewatched Loki. I say that time, we definitely do that. We'll just do like at least the last one. Mm-hmm. So Loki's coming up. We'll do that uh, one week off. PC Mike, Giggler, thanks for another good one today. I had a lot of fun. I think we covered a lot of good stuff. PC Mike, any words of advice for the club out here, for the squad, for the crew that has been joining us each and every week? Enjoy the summer. Enjoy the weather. Put on sunscreen. Yeah. I'm going, to the, I'm going to the lake this week and not going to tell you where <laughs> locations, longitude, latitude, but I'm going to try to remind myself to put on some sunscreen. You know what that means? It just means I'm getting too comfortable. Uh, I'm, I'm too comfortable. <laughs> I'm like, so I'm like these fans, like uh, we're in here every week. I'm getting too comfortable. I'm oversharing. <laughs> okay, I mean, maybe we'll be in a first name basis with some people soon. I mean, we already got Scott. We already got Scott and we got other people. We got a lot of people joining in. I had a guy write me and he literally just said, can I have an autograph? John, John B. I'll give you a little shout out, John. I'm and- surprised you didn't give his first, middle, and last name after today. <laughs> his email address, his phone number. That's no, well, awesome. I'm going to send him one. I want you guys to sign it too, of course. We'll print him off a picture or something. But we just got people coming from all over the place. It's crazy. Good. And we're having fun. I think it's too much fun. That just made my day. Are you guys excited to have a break, a week off? It's probably nice. It'll be cool to do like two episodes at once. Yeah. And like kind of 
see how that feels. Do like a little recap and like kind of refresh yourself. And yeah. honestly, not over dissect a single episode. Yeah. Uh, you're right. Giggler, any final thoughts for everybody? Um, yeah, we'll miss you. I know you'll miss us. Enjoy your trip. Thank you very Most much. Importantly. And uh, thanks, everyone, for listening. Yeah. As always, thank you very much. Thank you to our Patreon patrons, our newsletter subscribers, the Mostly Superhero Squad, all of you folks out there continuously showing up for us. We appreciate you. And we'll be back in two weeks. Enjoy the break. I'm Logan. That's the Giggler. That's PC Mike. We'll see you next time. Take it easy. <laughs>